flashing lights, baby. Flashing lights everywhere. Niggas was saying shit about me, they didn't even fucking know me. This is my school. This is what I was doing when wasn't nobody looking. Y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! It's Wednesday. We halfway there. We almost <laughs> done. <laughs> These shows be long, bro. I'll be tired. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I got the undercover cop fit, courtesy of the good folks. At I Dr. see. Dr. This, this looks so weird on the right. <laughs> got socked on over. Uh, got on socked on today over. in honor of Brandon Jane. I broke my no sock streak. <laughs> <laughs> in honor of Mr. B. But this is Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. We got the legend Gilbert Arenas here with, with, it, with the, the Adidas bag is flourishing. Yes, sir. All white. Yeah. It's that Anthony Edwards, you know, that campaign. Okay. I said, ooh, I, I want that. <laughs> That's real. We got Brandon Jennings here. Yes, sir. I know. I thank you for letting me wear the same shoes as you. I, I felt bad when I walked in. I seen you with the, <laughs> but it's a momentous occasion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. You momentum. look much better in them now. And momentum. <laughs> And we got Kenya Martin back here with us. What's happening? That Psycho Bunny came oh, through. Yeah. Shout out to Psycho Bunny, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Looking <laughs> <Taking> out. <laughs> so, nothing like free. Yeah, nothing like free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what's cooking in the arena today. LeBron doubled down on his dominance with or without his time in South Beach. But is he the most disrespected superstar in NBA history? Would averaging a triple-double cement Joker as the most dominant big man offensively in the modern era? And what does heat culture really mean? We got two-time NBA champion Norris Cole pulling up to the arena to discuss. But before we get into all that, as always, show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Do yourself a favor, download the app, use promo code GILL. They will match your first deposit up to $500. They're only doing that $500 deposit match through the end of the week. So make your next move your best move. Go ahead and download it. Get that 500. It's much better than the 100 they're going to go back to. No offense, underdog, but we're going to keep it real. <laughs> and as always, we do mostly fans at the end of every show. <laughs> <laughs> we drop a good question in the chat with your underdog fantasy username. Yeah. And we'll give you a $50 bonus. <laughs> and if you drop a video question to mostlyfansgill at gmail.com, you get a hundred dollar bonus. You, you got two questions. You got to change your voice with that music, dog. You got to be soft. I'm trying. You got a little, little soft. Yeah, you got to go yeah, softer no. with that very music. White. Going, very white. Very white. Yeah, you got to go white. very white, or you got to go real, mm. like mm. underdog. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's the one. All right, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. And we do the show live here on YouTube. But if you can't watch it with us, I don't know why you couldn't. But you can listen to audio versions of the podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast from. So, you know, we got a lot to get into today. Norris Cole pulling up in a little bit. But let's start this show off with a little bit of hibachi time. Uh -huh. We're getting right to it. Early. So Cam Thomas has been on demon time this season. After setting an NBA record for points off the bench in the season opener, Cam has continued to flourish after getting inserted to the net starting lineup. We got some Cam. Oh, yeah. Cam, through his first 10 career starts, he's averaging 29.1 points per game, which surpassed MJ's 27.3 for the most of any player since 1971. That is their first 10 starts. But through his first 12 starts, he's increased that average of 30.3 points per game after that 45 piece he dropped on the Bucks' heads Monday. It was a loss, but the 45 is 45, nonetheless. When you dropped 45 and you lost, were you sad? No. <laughs> I'm just saying. Y'all lost. <laughs> no. No. I did my job. Mm -hmm. So the Nets have Ben Simmons under contract uh, until 2025, Mikael Bridges through 2026, Cam Johnson through 2027. Gil, how good can this Nets core for Bridges, Ben Simmons, Cam Johnson, and Cam Thomas be in the East? Core? That's, I, 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 it's a baby four, a baby big four. It's one dude, man. Right, the dude that they didn't want playing, the dude that they like just didn't pay attention to was the best player. He was killing when Kevin Durant was there. 
Mm -hmm. Right? He was showing who he was then, and for some odd reason, they didn't want to play him. And at this point in the season, he is the best player, and he should have been the best player from when that trade happened. So it's one dude, the other three, at 27 years old, they can go. You're not rolling with Mikael Bridges, Gil? <clears throat> they can go. He's a fan of the show. No, I'm just saying, that they... They can go. Like I, like I got three twenty. They're, the other, they're three twenty-seven year olds. One is twenty-two, right? So, the one that actually has the future there is the twenty-two year old, right? Who's averaging twenty-eight some points right now. The other three, I can, if I can, I can make a trade somewhere and to get a better piece to help him, I can do that. I have leverage. So you're basically saying that the Nets should. But the two best players is Mikael and him. So should the Nets focus on building their franchise around Cam Thomas? Him and him and yeah. him and him and Mikael. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank sure. you. For sure, Cam. Huh? For sure, Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas. Yeah. I think Ben Simmons is a special talent, man. Like, yeah, I you go can't. You ben can't get off. rid of him. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not writing Ben off like like everybody want to. Like I think that what they had, what they got back in the trade, and with yeah, this little assassin they got. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like they have to make the playoffs. Yeah, that's East. yeah, that's definitely. I mean, that's definitely. not a score like Cam Thomas. No, no, right. definitely no. But the team they got with a coach like yeah. Jock, the yeah. team they got the bench, I like them to make the playoffs at least. Yeah. At least, yeah. Listen, they're giving you fucking ten spots to get try <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they gotta, like, they gotta be one of the ten best teams out there. <laughs> shit. So Ben Simmons uh, is making forty <laughs> mil next year. He'll be a free agent after that. You think might like, keep him, but he got to take a, a yeah, discount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, because yeah, you can't be averaging wait this four and a half. Or, so he's making can't be averaging four and a half points making that. He's making thirty eight this year, forty next year. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, you, 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 you got to take a haircut. <laughs> now what if next year he comes in average motherfucker twenty ten and eight? <laughs> well, then, then we yeah, go yeah. then. Well, hey, yeah. no haircut needed. Damn it. Then we got some situations. Because in this league, he can if he put his mind to it. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. And that's, if he put his mind to it, and, and, and it's, it's, it's not hard like to do. Players like him, they're, they're so unselfish that if they see someone that can score, they're just going to divert them. Yeah. Right? Like, it ain't like, hard for him to get three layups a quarter. I know, but it's like <laughs> you're, you're, you're trying to Two pass. free throws, no, two layups. No, totally. Huh? Yeah, for sure. That is it. But you're... You're, you're trying to be something that's, that doesn't exist, right? You're trying to be this Magic Johnson mm -hmm. style, and Magic did him, right? He, 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 was, he was who he was. He was a playmaker. He was a player. He scored when no one stopped him. Mm -hmm. He didn't stop himself to make passes. Yeah, yeah. You had to stop him for him to pass. 6'9", coming down the lane, you got to stop that. Getting to the back, <laughs> yeah. that wheel. All right, fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got something for you. Yeah. You know, but him, he, he literally doesn't look at the basket, and he's stopping himself. Yeah, that shit is dying. crazy to me. I'm watching it like it's like... That would piss me off. It, it, it pisses me off, and I ain't even on his team. Yeah, that would piss me off. Just watching him play, like, dude, you, come on, man. You got like, to, like, dog. Like, your unselfishness is making you selfish. Yeah. It's like, right now, you're being selfish. It's a selfish right, way to play right, basketball. Right, right. It is. Yeah, we interviewed Montrez Harrell recently. I think he echoed those same sentiments of, like, you know, I don't really have to guard you out there because you're not an offensive threat. Yeah. Like, your only two points the other night, like, at halftime was a tip dunk. You got two points at halftime, you got 10 rebounds, two points, like six assists, and, and then you had like a tip dunk. Yeah, like, nah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's considered selfish behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like, like what they have. Because it reminds me of you, like, like <clears throat> you're purposely not shooting. That is selfish. Yeah. Right? That is, that's what that's called. Like, you're purpose. Like, imagine going into the game and then someone pissed you off and you, you, you taking 30 something shots and then now you want to take two. That's fix. That's the fix is in. Yeah. Motherfucker, <laughs> you fixing the games, brother. Right? So it's like, nah, go out there and you know, you take your eight shots per, per half. What's, what's wrong with that? Ain't nothing wrong with that for him. But yeah, I like they core. I like what they have as a unit, man. I like what they bring to the to the East. Like, they, yeah, I, it's... I think good basketball, Campbell competitive, and a dude like I, that. I, you got somebody I, I, like that. Monte Ellis type. Yeah. Yo. Like, so that meme they asked the other day, to get four assists, your life was on the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, I'm going with Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four yeah, assists? 
Remember I told Forces you? For your jam, <coughs> dude, you see the shot he shot the other day? The one we put in the thing, his yeah. feet was facing this way. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're going to talk he about was it. facing in a backwards. He jumped in the air to shoot that thing. I'm going to get this thing off. Nobody over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trusting either one. Yo, <laughs> me neither, deep. but after me seeing that shot, yeah, yeah. I laughed to myself like, yeah. Michael Porter Jr. I got no chance to camp. <laughs> not at all. Not with, not with that move. Uh -huh. That was me in high school. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about right there. So no you, thought process of passing. The, <laughs> I wouldn't even take the ball out of bounds because I had to pass the ball. <laughs> damn, damn. God damn. I'm sorry, man. God damn. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, man. I'm be like sorry. this. Oh, be shit. like this. Every time. You go, you go. So ball go there, you right there like, no, brother, you better take that out. Yeah, they had to move me to the two because of that. <laughs> Just get up the court, man. Bro, Just man. Get up the court. So, he said he wouldn't even take it out. <laughs> Obviously, if you're the Nets, you never want to lose a generational talent with somebody like Kevin Durant. But KD, 35 years old, got some good pieces back in exchange for it. Got Cam out here just killing it. Did trading KD help the future of the Nets franchise? Yes. The future? Mm, they already had him. <laughs> Cam Thomas was already there. Yeah. <laughs> the future was already there. Yeah, sitting but on the bench. yeah, you yeah, sitting the on the see the key word that's sitting on the bench. bench yeah. So yeah, so it, trading him did help. Yeah. No matter the pieces they got back, they had somebody who they need to unleash, the sort and so to speak. Yeah, and I don't like that 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 stat that you said earlier. Ten starts, like it's better uh, than Michael Jordan. No, yeah. Jordan did the first ten games of the season. Yeah, yeah, that was you know <laughs> yeah. that was he was a rookie. You yeah. know everybody else is rookies. You know he's three years. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. I done got my shit down. <laughs> Start me ten games right now, yeah. goddammit. it! But Cam only twenty two. Obviously MJ did three years in North Carolina. Is, does that make but it? What I'm saying is if you put anybody in, three, give everybody their third year in the NBA and they say, all right, we're going to start you 10 games right now. And the game was different. Like, yo, like how about Luca? Let's, let's take Luca's third year and then say, all right, first 10 games of the season, what you going to have for yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, Point. It's fair. I mean, you know, my third, you know, it's, it's three years, man. You know, you're third year. Think about you who you are at a third year. Oh, yeah. yeah different player. We're this good. is a story. We had Cam on the show. Uh, some similarities between your games. What's it like just riding the bench? Obviously, everybody on this couch had different experiences with their time in the league when they came in as rookies. But what's it like riding the bench knowing that you can go out there and cook dudes and then finally getting that opportunity to go showcase it? It's, it's, it's. It's up and down as emotions because there there does come times where you know you you see certain players and we're like damn I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm ready for this league right you know especially if you're a guard <laughs> no no, no, no. <laughs> you know I mean, somebody, you're talking about you got Vince out there you got Kmart you got Shaq you got Kobe but like yeah I don't, I don't know about this uh, <laughs> I'm about to be overseas and then it becomes you know you do something in practice and they not seeing it you killing in practice you think that's what practices about like killing these dudes in practice they ain't putting me in the game and then eventually you start getting angry bitter and then eventually something taps in where you want to get better because now you want to prove to them that you're not a bench player and that's when your game changes the the mother the mother four phases you wasn't ready to play when you say i need to prove to them that i belong in this league that's when you start getting better other than that you just so what's like, hard, harder to adjust to, the offensive side or the defensive side? All of it. All of the first 40 games, I really wasn't ready. But it's all of it. Speed, you know, strength. Um, even though I was faster than everybody, it's still, everyone's fast, right? You know, you see a lane, it all closes up, right? So now you have to, you know, figure out what your speed is, what your strength is, right? Going in there versus guys who can jump higher, right? Understanding what their strengths are. Like, it's, it's processing everything in in real time, there's no, you know, uh, oh, he, <laughs> this dude over here can't play. Let me go ahead and go to his side and just work him. No, that's everybody. Every Everybody you're playing with is elite and Brandon, at something. Brandon, you coming from, from Italy, obviously playing against grown-ass men, now yeah. coming to the league. Yeah. You feel like that made that transition easier because you had already seen? I mean, I didn't think I was going to start, though, like coming in because I didn't play all year, and Luke Renara was there, and he was already a vet. He ran the offense well. Um, so the first, like, the first couple of preseason games, I wasn't starting at all. I didn't know until, like, the day before if I was going to start. So I didn't, really didn't have any time to really learn in, either, like, the NBA game. Like, I just got thrown into the fire. So it was kind of, 
you know, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. So you didn't know you were starting to the during training camp? No, nothing. Yeah, no, nothing. Because I mean, he was kicking my ass. Like Luke Renard was literally kicking my ass every day. <laughs> like seriously, but that's, that's not but me. that's because I mean, I was still coming from you know, you know, the bitterness of not playing and thinking, okay, well, I guess the league, I'm gonna have to wait again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like just torn with it a little bit, and then I just turned it up. I guess the last couple of preseason games. But I had no idea I was going to start, though. Mm. Yeah, for people who don't know, Lou Rittenauer. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's my roommate. No, for sure. Yeah. He was he one was of like the ones that. coming no, out he of was like that. No, he, no. He, he, like, he didn't look like that, but when he got on the court. But it was just like, you know, the NBA was different from Europe. Still. Yeah. Like, the NBA is like, you you know, playing every, every day, picking roles. Kurt Thomas trying to, you know, I can't. You know, I'm getting beat up in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. <laughs> yeah, that was my, that was my, um, that was my, room, that was my roommate. Him and Michael Dunleavy. That was our three. That was my three roommates. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we used to like when they like whoever they played like during that camp. You know, you had the big camp at um, yep. what was that Dominguez? Oh, uh, Pump Camp. Or was the Pump Camp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we were always roommates every year, and then we would just give each other notes on who we played. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would go like eight to a room back in those yeah, days. It was like, just a, it was us three. Our team. Was we had team. we had a little advantage because Mike Dunleavy was a coach's, you know, NBA coach's son. So you know. good boy. <laughs> Michael Red, Andrew Boga was there. Charlie Bell. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you had a. You know, uh, Carlos Delfino. I had a, you know, Jason. It's all right. Yeah. It's a solid team. So, yeah, yeah, solid team. A lot of defenders. Can you how about yourself making that transition from Cincinnati to the league? <laughs> no issue? <laughs> Man. I had no problem with the NBA. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm being honest. He, said he, like, came, he came in the league like this. Yeah, I'm just being honest. Like, I was physically ready to play. Okay. I just did, f man, with the. Well, I Mother with tat say on, um, I just did five motherfucking years in the joint. Uh -huh. And I just did four motherfucking years at Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> and I was ready for anything. <laughs> at that point, uh -huh. after my leg healed, I was ready for anything. That, um, so that was my biggest thing. Me trying to prove to people that I was still that. Mm -hmm. That I was worried of being the number one pick still. Because people still had doubts. Like, oh, is he going to jump the same? Can he play the same? Is he going to be this? Is he going to be that? Yeah, but no, it was like that's what it was at the time. But it was that me trying to prove that, and yeah, that, but physically, like I was ready to play. Like there was no, there was some dudes I played against that was like, oh, this is strong as shit. Mm -hmm. But I, I, it wasn't like I was like overwhelmed with it. Was that the, the sorry ones who was just there built for just brute and fight? Oh no, I'm glad like guy like Aaron Williams was on my team. Uh huh. <laughs> like, like if I had to wrestle with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> strong. Yeah. Like with other guys who people looked at was like was strong, I, I just didn't it didn't it didn't move me because mm -hmm. I was physically and then my my rookie year the weight program we had it in Jersey like I was still on it, so it was it, it wasn't it wasn't no thing it, it was just me adjusting probably to the speed of it, mm -hmm. but after I got that and then I realized I, I found I realized early, and when once you started playing and once you got in you realize these things and but for me in my position. Mm -hmm. If you're not stronger than me, more athletic than me, you're not tougher than me, mm -hmm. you have no wins. Yep. So once I figured that, I figured that out halfway through my rookie year. Mm -hmm. And once I got that, be playing against certain guys, and I was like, oh, this is, oh, just wait. Yeah. <laughs> it was all, for me, it was like, just wait. And that's what, and then that summer, man, like we went and made it to the finals in my second year, bro. So just like I figured it out halfway through my rookie year. And then my second year, I came in, I was 100% healthy. And, but yeah, now my rookie year, now nah, it was. That's what I said, once you figure it out. Yeah, you that, figure that part of it out. To the point. Yeah, you figure that part out. Once you, you figure know. out what your advantages are against mm -hmm. dudes. Yep. Yeah, you know and these are the all stars I'm talking about. Like these are no, guys who no, are all they, they, like these they, are guys who are all stars that mm -hmm. I'm comparing myself to. Yeah. Like I'm kicking y'all ass every night. Mm -hmm. Every night. <laughs> and they y'all all. Like year three, like when Sharif, Sharif playing for Atlanta, mm -hmm. and they put him on the All Star team year three, and I felt that should have been my spot. We the number one team in the East. Mm -hmm. They put him on the All Star team because they need they, the game was in Atlanta and they wanted to represent it from the team. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I was livid. <laughs> okay, he scored a couple fifty point games with other dudes, but I'm kicking Sharif ass because he can't match up athletically, mm -hmm. height, tough, like mm -hmm. nothing. But he was doing other people, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm looking at the... Yeah, yeah, our matchup. I, yeah, I'm, and that was in year three, but early on, like, it was like, look, once you figure that out, that part, man, it's... Yeah. 
Let's see, I had he didn't he didn't have the I had an advantage. Like at the two, I'm sitting, I'm looking at Jason Richardson like, oh my God, this is we used to, hey, after the game, we used to be like, y'all, you good? <laughs> you good? And he was like, man, they, they killing out there. And when I started looking at the point guards, right, I'm like, y'all slow. Y'all don't try to score. Y'all trying to run offense, right? So when I started playing, I realized my natural gift, they wasn't used to it, mm-hmm. right? Sitting there just taking off. Yeah. Like you're not, <laughs> all right, one, one full go. Like you, you, you're not used to this. You're used. I had Eric Dampier in them, so there was no post. We didn't have Shaq and all of them where yeah. I have to sit there and pass the ball and do all this too. There was none of that. It was screeners. It was just screeners. So the scoring came from me, Antoine, uh, Jay Rich. Mm-hmm. So now you got zipper. You got all this with pistol, pistol action. So I became an offensive threat in a time where the point guard was not that. You know, Iverson had to move to the two. Other than that, there was really no point guards that was actually, like I was averaging 29, the second highest was Mike James. Mike James was the second highest point guard scoring. Nobody, they wasn't used to (laughs) And he was still running the offense, but it was such an advantage. So you're the one. Huh? You're the one. Oh, no, no, no. I'm no, 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 no. You That's created- what like. Iverson, they moved Iverson to the two and put Eric Snow in. Mm. When I came in, I'm the one who actually changed the point guard as a score. Because they didn't know what to do with the hybrids. What is, what is this? Right? He's not, he's not a two. He can't run the offense. And then I'm having success. And then that's when, like, oh, shit, like, okay. Uh, ben Gordon, come on. We know what to do with y'all now. Come on, Ben. Come on. And that's when all those shorter shooting guard hybrids start coming in the league. We know what to do with you now. Just put y'all out there play. Fuck it. Change the game. Mm-hmm. So, so let's go back to Cam Thomas. And Ken, you talked about that crazy buck he had over Jalen Brown. Well, let's take a look at that for everybody at home. Give y'all some context. So me, you, Steph. James. Like, you can't really... Me, you, Steph, James. Mm-hmm. This ain't something you work on in the gym. I'll say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> this, yo, Damn. Man. <laughs> Even Jay LeBron's like, wait a minute. He's not finna shoot this. He's not finna shoot this. Oh, shit, he shot it. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Yo, he can get his stuff off in the 80s. Like this? Play in the 80s? The way in he, the 80s? Yeah, the way he shoot, like the way he... He getting it off in the oh. 2020s. Yeah, but it would, it would look like it's from that era. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the 80s, they were shooting back here. <laughs> but his body frame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His movement? Yo, this is... And look where his feet facing. Like, that's a... You know what's so funny? He, oh, yeah. We already know training's about to start doing this shit, right? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yeah. Hey, this is just him Don't being have. gifted. It's gonna be have a lot somebody of somebody in the ER. Yeah. Uh, Twist the ankle, ankle, ankle hands, hands back. back. In the ER. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, there's only yeah. a few people in the world that can pull this off, man. Don't. He doing all kind of stretches and Pilates and all kind of <laughs> shit. To... <laughs> niggas in the ER. Yeah, that shit, man. He's a scorer. He's a scorer. Like, he ain't, yeah. Like, I, I see, like, people in the chat, they like, oh, how about Baron Davis? Baron Davis was a point guard. Maul Bear was a point guard. Yeah, BD was a... PD, they were point guards. He was a point guard that could score. Yeah, he was a point guard that was a score. Same thing with, you know, uh, Stephon Maul Bear. Same thing with, you know, Steve Francis. Like, Steve Francis, 16 to 20. There was no guy out there who thought scoring first. Yeah. As a like, point. it was Allen Iverson, but they put him to the two and bring in Eric Snow. Like, there was no point guard that said, I'm just scoring, second is passing. Yeah. Right? It wasn't. But, yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Like, BD was a point well, guard. I think Steph was more, Steph was like 90 10, though. Steph Marbury? Yeah, he was trying to score that bitch. Yeah, he was trying, but he averaged like eight assists. Yeah, there was but, no uh, way. Yeah, but I'm saying, but yeah. Yeah, in, in, in the <laughs> league with guys running the play, no, <laughs> he's trying to score that bitch on the plays we ain't, on the well, time we not running the play. Yeah, but time you not running the play. On the other time that we ain't, we ain't running, Steph trying to put that bitch yeah. in the basket. Yeah, but that's what I said. Absolutely. Was running plays yeah, still. It was, like, yeah. <laughs> I literally ran no plays. Like, yeah, what the, the fuck play. we had yeah. to. <laughs> It yeah. was like I'm faster than I'm faster than everybody. So I, once I get the rebound, let me see if I can just beat everybody up the court first. So there's plays where teams scored, I'm already down the court trying to score. Yeah. Right. So it was it was just weird. And I just look back like, yo, how did they allow me to do this? Yeah. No, but the only reason is because we didn't have big man. So everything I did, pick and roll, Antoine Jameson, come on. You know, oh, I'm driving. Big man, you just there. 
in the way. And Brandon, I'm curious, what was that like for you? Because I'm like, you averaged like 35 a game in high school, but you went to the McDonald's game, and obviously you were playing with other elite guys. And that 35 was because of watching him. Like, like watching guys like him in high school. Because yeah, he, he wore my shoes, you know. Yeah, no, I did. I had the, I had the custom <laughs> gills. So that's why, okay, it was <laughs> personal the other day when y'all got it. Yeah, that's why, you know, cool. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was because I was just forced. But like I said, I didn't have that mindset. See, I was more of a pass first. Mm-hmm. So I had to just score that senior year. Even anything in AAU, I was pass first with Kevin Love and all those guys. So right. that was... That was just usually my natural ability, was to pass first. So. How did that change come into the league, though? Because in your rookie season, you go back and look at those numbers, what, 24 in yeah. your second game, 25, your third, the 32 in the Nuggets, the 55. Did that kind of shift a little bit? I mean, Michael Red went down um, after what, I think, uh, in the beginning of, of the season. So I just had to take over this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah, that helps because they run every, yeah, they run shift Mike. Yeah. yeah. They out of everything. Yeah, everything yeah, Mike, everything yeah. Mike Red. And then yeah. once Mike got hurt. Motherfucker Mike putting that bitch over here, boy. You see, people, people, don't, says that people don't understand that. Like, you, you, you're playing the right way. Someone goes down, someone has to take over that scoring. Yep. Usually the problem is when they come back. Yeah. You're like, man. Ooh, y'all man. tough out there. Both of y'all left-hand motherfuckers out there. Ooh. Me, him, and Bogut? Ooh, uh, well, uh, like I said, you and Michael I know, I'm saying, we definitely getting past Atlanta first round. Y'all, you if, and Michael Red putting that thing in the basket the way y'all was together? Two lefties out there? Ooh, yeah, that would have been. <laughs> like, people don't realize I wasn't. My first All Star was not really my All Star. It was Larry Hughes's All Star. Like Larry Hughes was, like leading our team in scoring, and then he broke his thumb. Like so, he, him, and Antoine was leading for All Stars. Mm-hmm. Like they were gonna be the All Stars. He broke his thumb, and then I took on that scoring position from the guard position. And then so by the time he got back, I'm averaging twenty something. I'm the All Star. Like we was in Denver. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, yo, this your all-star, so bring the family, shit. We gonna celebrate, you know what I mean? And that's how that was. It was really his all-star. He was playing phenomenal. That was my first year in Denver. Yeah, that was your first year in Denver, yeah. Yo, that shit just, I want to throw up when you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it just the shit that, how, how it all went down, me being in Denver. Like, uh-huh. I ain't got no problem being in Denver, but how it all went down, mm-hmm. me being in Denver. <laughs> like, trying all star, like, I'm supposed, yeah. to be in, I'm supposed to be in the East still. Yeah. Oh, you still, but you, yeah, 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 you still been Come in the East. Come on, man. Yeah. Like they, like the situation, like just then, yeah, that position, that yeah, position, east, yeah, yeah, in the east, yeah, come on now. yeah. Ain't taking nothing off Twan and play, but come on now, <laughs> <laughs> come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was playing me, yeah, yeah. You was out there, you, yeah, you saw it before I vacated. <laughs> When I throw them fucking animals at the four. At the four. Yeah, I, straight shit. to the west. Like, oh, damn, damn. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting at six. Like, vote. He said, what start vote? That six. Shit. Oh, who? Who? Uh, also, where? Hey, yeah. with them? Yeah. yeah. Nah, I got TG, Tim, Dirt, Mario. <laughs> like, yo, fifth off top. Shit. I'm coming in at fifth. He said, come I'm coming in, in at fourth. When I signed my contract, I was fifth. <laughs> yeah. To go to the West. Shit. That's rough. <laughs> but, Brandon, we see your. Go you decked like out. one, two, to, like yeah. shit. Yeah, one, two, to. Ah. <laughs> we see you decked out at <clears throat> Tough Crowd Curry Brand collab. Yeah. Uh, Basketball has opened up a lot of doors, taking you a lot of places Compton to Rome, Milwaukee to China. But for you, it all started in Gardena at the legendary Raleigh Park. So, this, spe- this Saturday is a special day for you. 11 11 is the official launch of the Tough Crowd Curry Brand collab. But it's also there where Tough Crowd, Curry Brand, and Under Armour pay homage to the birthplace of your basketball career, where your hoop dreams became a reality to help the present and the future following your footsteps. It's just home, man. It's just a place that I can't, you know, I can't ever leave because of the sound of the ball in this gym. This is where I first picked up a basketball. You know, I grew up in a single parent mother home. You know, my dad passed when I was eight. At the age of 11, you know, 12, 13, you know, basketball became a job. So that was already a tough crowd because, you know, the things I had to do to survive early at a young age, just anything in life, I think me just taking a risk. It started when I made a decision to go to Oak Hill. 
Then I made a decision to be the first player to skip college to go overseas to live in Rome, Italy. And I think just where the game of basketball took me in my life always led me to other opportunities in life too. What we don't realize is that like we see, we're seeing more than just hoop. Like it's different opportunities, different things that we might not know that we're really good at until we really just take a risk and uh, take a chance at it. I just feel like every risk I've taken, I haven't failed yet. So why stop now? style of tough crowd is it's LA. It's bold, you take a risk, um, you're not trying to fit in, you're kind of like an outcast. You love life and you're willing to do whatever you know, to be the best. I think it's just a reminder to don't ever forget where I come from and you know, the steps I had to take to get to this next level. Who started the vlog? What's up, baby? How you doing? Man, how you doing? Another day, man. Yeah. Oh, how man, you doing? Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Love it, man. I may come out and return. Okay, okay. <laughs> we need. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want? Uh, you want to get on weekend? Man, without J.K., you know, I don't know if I would be playing basketball. You know, him just opening up these doors and these opportunities, and um, being able to have the platform that he had at the time was big for us. You know, we never had any NBA players coming through the city. So to see Michael Cooper, I mean, Michael Cooper was everything, you know. And we got a Laker, NBA champion Laker at Raleigh Park at the time. And it had to be about 300 kids in the 90s. I just remember getting my opportunity to play one-on-one -on -one in front of the whole camp. And, uh, you know, I did my thing. And, you know, that was like, you know, like, you know, I was, you know, stunning because I was the young one. I used to cry. And then I, you know, turned it to Brandon. Oh, I'm loving the logo, man. Yeah, logo. We're going to have uh, Steph's logo on the court, too. Oh, okay. Um, tough crowd's going to be on the baseline. We're going to keep the uh, Wally Park, you know. Um, yeah, 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 okay. You know, Wally Park. Yeah, we gonna, I still want to keep some of the stuff to let people, let you know, remember. What we, what we were. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I've been here since early 80s. We started the uh, Community Involvement League which was a league developed for kids. When we, when we first started out, it was like last year, kid, kids that didn't have a place to go when they got out of school. And when they came here, they knew that, their parents knew that they was gonna be protected, not so much me, but my staff and everybody. This was the place to come to play ball. And not just basketball, we did everything around here, basketball, football, baseball, but having this gym, you know, hey, that just says it all for, for us. And then, Again, this floor, oh, I'm loving it. It is so, I'm just so elated. I just always love this floor. I love this, love it. How big is Gardena local sports in my family? I mean, it's huge. It's everything. If you visit my Aunt Marsha's house, you're gonna see from Gardena Mohicans to the Panthers to, you know, playing at Raleigh Park, Rush Gym, just all, all over Gardena. So, I mean, my auntie, my auntie Marsha, she's definitely, she's definitely the local Gardena goat of sports. Anytime I came to Gardena, I would have to stop at my Auntie Marsha's house. No matter what was going on at the park, we would always come right back to my Auntie Marsha's house because the love was here, family, the vibes. It's like a whole just sports family. Like, we're not just basketball. Like, it's everything. On down the line, that's my oldest son, Chris, my youngest son, Steve. It's my granddaughter, Naya, and that's another granddaughter, Dallas. And she got my first Italian jersey. My first one. My first professional jersey, too. That's worth a lot. I'll keep it right here, though. The last place I was in America before I left uh, to go to Italy was here. 
it was here. Like, like that was my last, uh, my last place was here at Monty's house when I went to Rome too. So a lot of things always happen here before I like head off or go, go make some crazy risk. I think everything is timing in life. You know, with my brand growing and Steph starting his Curry brand back in 2020 or 2021, and me just starting Tough Crowd, I think everything just made sense. Well, you have the silent assassin, and then you have, you have the ultra ego, the one that's gonna really talk. So it, it balances itself out. So one thing about Curry, like if you text him about basketball, he probably won't text you back. But if you like hit him about other things in life, so like really like, you know, James Brown or some music or anything like that, he'll text you back. Text me, say, yo, I need this beat and this beat. I'm praying that I take off. Set back. Gotta get it with back. my egos. I got the right person for you. I need a house and then I reload. Homie, I would want to be me too. Family try and pull up. Tell them I would want to see me too. Homie, showing love for all the haters try and see me through. Balling like I'm Chef Curry. My auntie on the BBQ. Hit them with the God flow. See, this is how you step in heaven. This how they pay and won't you come and take the steps with a reverend. This how they hit you. You deliver like it's 7 Eleven. This that Brandon and that Steph call it 11 11. Give me this what they want. Sounds so fire. It keeps you in line. It keeps you in line. If you look up the definition, it keeps you in line. It keeps me focused. It lets me know that I'm in line and I'm in the right where I'm supposed to be in life. No matter what, what's going on, no matter how many distractions is coming at you, when you see 1111, that means you're on the right path and just keep going. You know, I want to inspire every kid in Gardena to know whatever you do. Like, you know, I was a basketball player. I played in the NBA. I played professionally 11 years, but also I'm a fashion designer now. I'm also uh, a podcaster, I'm in media. So I just want to let every kid know that you can be more than just a basketball player. This is like one of my biggest accomplishments. Like this is my Hall of Fame, this is my top 75, this is my all-star, this is my NBA championship to me because uh, this is where it started. So this whole thing of me doing is because I want to inspire the next. You know, I want the next kid to come out of Gardena. I want the next kid to understand that, yes, I came through these doors and I made it out, so you can too. What's up, homie? Yeah, that's smoke, good. give me yeah. smoke! Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> Almost shed a thug tear watching that. <laughs> Want to give a shout out to DePaolo, Carlos, Gardo, Brandon, Nick DePaolo, the rest of the yeah. crew, man. Uh, they're the reason this show looks and sounds so good, the reason that piece was so good, so. Got to show some love to our crew for, for all the hard work that they do. I know they was out there double duty and yeah. doing the show, then yeah. going all the way out to Gardena. They didn't get pressed or nothing out there, right? Nah, 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 nah. They good. They good. They good. <laughs> Everything Made it good. back safely. Yeah. But, uh, Brandon, when you were coming up hooping at Raleigh Park, did you ever imagine where basketball would take you? Man, no, man, because I used to always cry because I didn't get my way or, you know, like being little and <laughs> your older cousins were football players and, uh, you know, they was always punking me, but... Um, Man, I mean, the, you know, what that park and what that city has meant to me is the reason why I'm, you know, I, I'm here now. So, you know, that's home and that's, that's forever going to be home. So were they punking you or they were trying to make you tough? 
Trying to make me tougher. <laughs> trying to make me tougher. <laughs> trying to make me tougher. It's all tougher. perspective. Back then, especially if you was, was crying. Yeah. So especially yeah. if, in your words, yeah. if you was always crying. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. Toughen up, blood. Uh huh. But Come on, man. Definitely had those. Yeah, yeah. Had a lot yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah. Holding you down. You gonna yeah, keep yeah, crying? Yeah. You gonna keep crying? <laughs> mm hmm. I had uncles there yeah, locking yeah. me in closets and shit, so I trust Cause Because I was always like the wrestling test test dummy. Like, yeah. You know, like, it's like, come on, man, like, you're throwing me way over there. Sound cool. Yeah, we are. It's a big gym. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been there since 1990. Okay. I feel like we all had people growing up tormenting us, but yeah. it turned out for, for the best. My older <laughs> brother was like that. Like, shit. Yeah. Still have nightmares about it. I couldn't but. imagine having an older brother, but my mom would have had to call the police in that gym. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't imagine having an older brother in the house. <laughs> so you wrote an article for Slam Magazine calling the tough crowd Curry Brown collab the most impactful collaboration the league has ever seen. Why is this the most impactful collaboration the league has seen? Uh, I think just our journeys. Um, Steph being, you know, underrated and becoming who he, you know, who he is. Um, myself making the decision when I first started to take a risk to go overseas and give, uh, you know, a lot of kids opportunities for some different. Um, and then just our history through Under Armour, um, me leaving the game of basketball, starting my own brand, Tough Crowd, him having his own brand, and just collabing with my peers. Um, you know, I, I hope this just starts, um, you know, just future, you know, just future collabs with other uh, uh, peers. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, me and you, we have a collab coming. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just for us working together because um, fashion is one of our biggest things that we like now. Everybody's dressing, so if whatever it is, if it's the wine, if it's podcast, if it's, uh, you know, anything, you know, I just want to see more of our peers start collabing together. So y'all got a collab coming out? Who? You say you and Gil got, you collabing? Us. Yeah. Us. Him and us. Oh, yeah, us. The, the show. Gil's arena. Yeah. <laughs> we see the hostile territory. <laughs> yeah. Y'all came through it, and uh, it was kind of mid in here, Gil, I'm going to be real. Then they came through painting. Yeah, no, it was there, yeah. They, Added the flair, the color, the texture. I remember this was all, it was all white, boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you got your young lingo going on too. That I'm that trying to me. I like huh? how you got know, his lingo here. Oh, yeah, like, he's, trying his, oh, yeah. he's just trying to get his young lingo going. <laughs> okay. Undercover copping it. <laughs> it's funny, uh, the chat got a lot of love in the chat, but as always, the chat loves it. Hey, so they were talking about the tennis serve. Somebody said that serve, that serve was weak. Oh, the oh, uh, it's like the mo you know they they go they go pull out the most random shit, but <laughs> they paying attention. It's good. <laughs> they watching though. They watching. And it's crazy too, man, because I'm a lot older than you. But when you coming up, it kind of resurge that that L.A. point guard, point god thing. That's mm -hmm. going like NYC thinks they got the point guys, but mm -hmm. people like yourself, B.D., the Lions yeah, of mm -hmm. the world, the guys that have come through. So to see what you've been able to do. And now, after your career, because you were that dude coming out, mm -hmm. I think people really don't grasp how big of a deal it was for you to go from Dominguez to Oak Hill, Oak okay. Hill uh, to Italy. Uh, Italy, yeah. And kind of with, with trend that, that was supposed to set, but naturally, obviously, money got involved, haters got involved, a lot yeah. more kids didn't follow your path, but... Yeah, I, I think just the game of basketball, though, is what it's shown me. Um, man, I mean, this is a humbling, and I'm grateful, um, because where my life has been, where all the things that I have to go through... When I, you know, tore my Achilles, I didn't know where life was going to go. So, you know, just the opportunity that I have to be able to do things and give back, like my kids would be able to see that forever. Um, and more kids out of Gardena. So, man, I don't want to cry, but it's just like, you know, it's a, um, man. It's Shit, a I dope. did, nigga. Go ahead. Nah, <laughs> go I mean, ahead. Yeah, man, Shit. I mean, it's just a dope <laughs> feeling, man. It's just a dope feeling with everything I've been through in my life. Um, and to be able to come back and do this has been amazing, amazing. Is this, uh, when you hurt your Achilles, is this when you s started focusing on uh, Tough Crowd? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Um, I was trying to figure out what was next in my life. You know, I didn't know if I was ever going to play again, but I was able to find something else. And, you know, since I stopped playing, um, I've been going so hard with it. And, you know, it's been opening up so many doors mm -hmm. in my life. Like, you know, uh, God has been so great to me tr tremendously. And, man... It's just, it's just amazing, man. He's doing his thing with me. Mm -hmm. He's doing his thing with me. Yeah, I, so I read the article too. It was a dope article, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Like, yeah, nah, that's yeah. It's deep. It's dope. Thank you. Nah, that's it's a blessing, bro. Nah, you're doing some. You know, you're doing I love some getting back, man. man. Like you know, the kids, man. Yeah. They gonna be able to, you know, more kids gonna be able to come out of Gardena. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Something. Say something positive. Yeah, you gotta start. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So. And big shout out to Steph too, man. We got to go out to Baltimore because of you, uh, Brandon, mm-hmm. to hang out at the Under Armour workout and just talk to. It. But to yeah. see the way that y'all to get along and rock with each other. Yeah. And if you're in the LA area or anywhere close, we need everybody to make your next move your best move. Pull up to Raleigh Park this Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tough crowd, Curry Brand Under Armour doing the special core dedication. Brandon will be there, the crew will be there out there. Oh, doorbell time. Who can it be? Come in. Oh, I gotta give you your shoes. Oh, yeah. Let me get my, <laughs> oh, man, I got, hey, man. Okay. <laughs> we got Norris Cole in the building. Oh, I gotta miss some kicks, though. You hear me knocking? Let him in. Let in, damn it. I got me some kicks, baby. And now we wait. They look comfortable. Uh Uh-uh. Can't wait. Pull up. So, special guest making his first appearance in the arena. Two-time NBA champion with the Heat. Played six seasons in the league. What's up, sir? How you doing? What's up, baby? What's going on? What's up, OG? He's hooped all over the world. One chip in France and Israel, all right. but you don't play. You don't play damn near <laughs> everywhere, bro. Like just, yeah. just. But hey, Been around the block balling all over the world. Mix it over a little bit. Let's scoot it. Move Y'all can just come down this way. Wait, won't you just put this right here? Yeah. All right. You know. <laughs> he's, he's, oh shit! See? Oh that's look! Why I don't move shit. That's why. Let right. him be. Boss me around. Let him be. Sweet though. Norris, call. What's going on with you, bro? What's up, bro? Man, enjoying LA, working out, enjoying life. Uh huh. I'm a vet now. I used to be the young guy on the block. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm the vet. <laughs> now you're right down the street, apparently. Like I am. Okay. So you want to give way. his address? I'm about to see. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give his address? Did I, did I say I need? To, I say you right down the street, apparently. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you're hooping in Egypt, hooping in Saudi Arabia. What's the latest on the hoop side? Uh, I'm a free agent right now. Um, I'm probably waiting to go back to play in Puerto Rico, which is in the spring. Okay. That season starting in the spring, so I'm just spending time with family. I haven't been home this time of year in a long time, so I'm just enjoying the family. Um, my house out in Ohio is where I spend most of my time, so I'm getting to know my house, get to figure <laughs> stuff out. I ain't never getting to be there, so I get to enjoy life, really, man. I ain't got to enjoy my life like this in a long time. Okay. A long time, man. People don't understand that. Man, man people don't the understand grind that. Is, like, we're playing, but we miss a lot. Yes. We miss a lot in life. Like, we... We don't, like, because we're machines, so we don't really get to enjoy what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's going to be, have you ever, like, looked at your highlights and be like, man, when I do that? All the time. All the, all the, all the time. time. Like, oh, baby, all the it. time. Because it's, it's happening so fast that we, when you sit back and you're like, let me see what I did, it, half the shit, it surprises you. I had a vet that told me that, um, Jawan Howard told me when I was, when I was, like, a rookie, he was like, it's going to be hard to enjoy, he said, but enjoy it while you're doing it. And then when you're done, you'll enjoy it more. He said, it's going to be tough, though. And he ain't never lie. I was like, it's tough to enjoy it while you're doing it. Because, mm-hmm. like, the next day, no matter how good or bad you played, you got to move on to the next play, the next game. So now I'm getting a chance to sit back and, like, enjoy some of the fruits of the labor, you know, with my pops, my sister, and my mm-hmm. grandparents. So life is good right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like we mentioned, that's why I brag so much. I didn't get to brag when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get penalized now. Okay, shit, fuck it, might as well just brag now. <laughs> shit, fuck it, why not? I'm <laughs> like, you're a narcissist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I didn't get to be one when I was playing. I'm going to be all of it right now. So, Norris, you've been hooping all over the world, like we mentioned. You actually last season played with the Nuggets G League affiliate mm-hmm. under head coach Andre Miller. Yeah. But, God, actually, do you still want to play in the league? And if so, what do you feel like you could bring to a team? Uh, I, I would like to play in the league again. Um, I'm okay if I don't, but of course I would like to play in the league again. I think being a veteran that can still show the young fellas the day-to-day uh, preparation, the film sessions, the positioning on the court, and then obviously as a competitor, I can still, you know, I can still get up and down, mm-hmm. you know. But I think showing them how to be pros is the biggest value at this stage of my career, because. You know, guys can run fast, guys can jump high, everybody can do that, but when it comes to being a pro, taking care of your body, showing up early, knowing how to break down films so that when you get out there, you can compete and play on instincts, I think that's the best value that I would bring right now. So we talk about this a lot on the show. It seems like there's really a lack of that veteran presence. It is. Do you feel the same way around the league? It is. It's tough to watch because, like I said, these young guys are talented, but sometimes they need the voice of a, not a coach, but a, an older player who can still play that they can respect, 
but can show them. And if they ain't going to play a lot, you know, we can show them in practice so that when they get to the game, they can apply it. Because it's one thing when the coach tell you and then you watch film on an old player, it's like, I see it, I hear it, but when it's a guy there every day that you know can mix it up and can play with you, it comes, it's like, it's like it resonates different. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing that you know what I mean. Like you need a player to show a player. Exactly. Right. A coach is a, a coach is, is he he's coach? there, but he's yeah. a coach. Like you ain't really. He plays. It's like a father to a kid now. I, this shit ain't registering like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It registers. It just registered different. Different. Yeah. yeah. It just registered. Unless he played at I'm saying a high level, then it comes from a different place. But that ain't that often. Yeah. That. That's what I was telling them young guys in Grand Rapids when Dre was the coach. I said, y'all know who Andre Miller is? Mm. Some of them guys didn't know. I said. Go look on YouTube, go look at his stats, go look at what he accomplished, and come back tomorrow. And the next day in practice, they was like, yo, he was like that. I said, I know. So when he say something, <laughs> he did it already. So mm -hmm. understand what we're talking about. And so, well, that's what they need. They need older guys that play. Because you know these young guys now, it's the highlight. Yep, if, you don't, if you don't got a, you know, a thousand highlights on YouTube, they don't know. So it's, it's, it's nice to have a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, or if your highlight is the wrong color, if it ain't HD, you know, they ain't, they're not respecting it, so. Oh, shit, that's old. He played in the fucking Sabbath. Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at mine like, yo, what pixel was this? That's what I look like. Grainy <laughs> than a mother. Like, what number is that? <laughs> and it, it used to feel like real. the detours, the VHS is, It looked like, yeah, the, When yeah. we were coming up, this it would look crispy. Now you go back and look at it like, damn, so like, 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 we was watching TV like this. Man. Yeah. We was like oh, not too long ago, and our even our pixel looked different. Like right. when right. we was in the league, we go back and look at them. We be like, <laughs> like it was that like right. It was it that was long ago. I know, just, but it's like, it's just yeah. yesterday. That's, I'm looking at my highlights now, man. Like making, and I'm like, yo, yeah. this yeah. some bullshit. <laughs> so like, yeah, I was at so your games. popping out one of these VHS tapes and putting that bitch Kmart, in. Kmart, Kmart, but that's crazy. <laughs> hey. you, when you was at UC, you know I was in Dayton. Yeah. I'm from Dayton, so yeah, it, it looks crazy. Your highlights, your highlights, your highlights. I got, your highlights, a, bunch your highlights. I got a bunch of them. Yes, <laughs> man. And the store thing right at the house. A bunch of VHS tapes. I got a fucking the, the um, shit, the double player with the DVD on yeah, one yeah, side yeah. and the VHS on the other. <laughs> I got one of them still. Hey, and no, no TV to hook the bitch up to though. <laughs> That was advanced when that came. Yeah, it was. You was you felt like a baller. Like all you young people out there, y'all don't realize back in the day we used to have to rewind the tapes. Have to wait for shit to rewind. It's crazy that back in the day it's still the two thousands now. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like 2007, 2008. It's back in the day. It's yeah. considered back, back in the, the day, day now. That's Absolutely. wild to me. You used to have to go to Blockbuster, search the return bin for the movie we want. They have no idea what Blockbuster is. At all. They, That's because your parents. They have no idea what 30s. Blockbuster is. Huh? Cause your parents in the thirties. Yeah. I don't know. Grand, it's grandmother like, 41. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So you, you mentioned spending your time in the G League, uh, you know, under coach Andre Miller. But of the guys you played against in the G League, Skrilla. who'd you feel like is the most league ready? Mm, that's the most league ready. It's tough to say because the guys that's league ready was actually in the league. Yeah, uh, I'm saying the young, but out of the young group of guys, man, all the motherfuckers suck. I, I can't. No, that's, 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 that's the way you think. It's like, hard. Yeah, to, it's hard to say. No, just, one, that's that's just ready like that because I tell you, a guy who was talented, but he haven't got his chance yet. But he was Sharif Cooper was talented. Mm -hmm. He was supremely talented. <laughs> But he didn't get a chance. But I don't, you know, I don't know if it's because it don't translate or whatever. Small. And he's right. very yep. small, man. But he he do what guards do: paint touches. Yeah, I'm with you. Oh, he, he's pick a pick and roll. Yeah, he is. He, 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 he can touches. go. He can, you know, snake the pick and screen and roll, manipulate the defense. I mean, he's not a great shooter, but he can make a shot. But I don't, I don't know. He was, but he was really out of all the guards that I played against. He was pretty good. The, the one thing that if I'm gonna tell a guard that's like wanting to go to that next level, the one thing you need to have to do is shoot the ball. Today, for sure. Like, you have to be able to, like, have a jumper. Yes. That's, if you have a jumper, everything else is cool. But if you can't mm -hmm. shoot the ball, like, it kind of really hurts your game. You remember what they used to say, create a trigger, try to mm -hmm. get two on one. But if you can't shoot, they can go so far under now. <laughs> it's like four on five out there yeah. now. And they'll really go under and disrespect you, like yeah, self-check if you can't shoot <laughs> now. So, yeah. yeah, you definitely got to be able to at least hit one out of every three. I mean, at least at the least. Yeah, that was that, that's what I said. That was my. That's when I when I first started. All pick and rolls under. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Y'all know I'm shooting this shit, right? Yep. <laughs> and, and look, like, if you man, make one, they gonna try you again. Shoot this That's shit, why right? I'm not Mookie Baylock. What the fuck? Everybody just no serious. Everybody like, cause you know when you're you're rook, it's like your rookie year is usually they trying you. They're trying you. Mm -hmm. Like so, I'm doing the pick and roll. Everyone's just going under, and I'm like. All right, they, they don't know I can actually shoot. I'm, I'm yeah, looking too guard. Told, yeah, because they told him on the scouting report he fast, beat him to the spot. Yeah, beat him to the yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what the scouting report probably said. Yeah, <laughs> beat him to the spot, see if he going to shoot yeah. mm -hmm. every time. Make him make a couple. <laughs> yep, make him yep. make a couple. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to do. Make one, that's all right. Let's see if it's true. Yeah. Go under again. Yeah. And if mentally, if you ain't locked in, supremely confident, that second one, you might not shoot it. Yep. Yep. Second guess, like it's you a second guess after you just made one. You were still second, second guess. Second guess, the fact that you like I, I, that is weird, right? That we we're at that level, we're at that level. But because we've been played a certain way, right? When we get to the the, uh, the next level and someone treats us like we ain't who we are, we actually start second guessing. Mm -hmm. Like or being out there getting ready to shoot and motherfucker just ah nah, let him shoot. Like I heard Lamar. <laughs> I heard Lamar Odom tell, tell somebody, hey, let him shoot. He can't even shoot a gun. What? <laughs> it was Jay Rich. Jay Rich got so, like, this happened, man, this happened like game 30, bro. Right? Game 30. He can't shoot. He can't even shoot a gun, right? The season over with, that's all he talked about. Now he just gonna be disrespected, like, who? <laughs> Lamar Odom, game 30? It's like, nah, man, he can't just. And that's what made him sit in the gym all day. That's a fact. Made him sitting in the gym Did all day. Did you hear day. it in the game? Bruh, we on the, we on the bench just sitting there. And he said, let him shoot. He can't even shoot a gun. Like, That's man. why he got to look over at y'all, the, the, the mental stigma. What? Man, listen, dog. <laughs> you, you look over to a bench, somebody say something like that. It's like you had a comedy show. Yeah, yeah, we over there. Everybody on the ground. <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. he, he can't shoot a gun. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Just don't look over there. <laughs> just don't look at it. Just don't, don't look, look over there. there. not. It's tough when that's not your role too. Like, like, like for a team I played against, it wasn't my job to shoot right off the first pick and roll because we got to get action. Mm -hmm. It's three other killers out there that expect to rock. So when they they go underneath and say some crazy stuff, you kind of be like, <laughs> like hold up, like. <laughs> and sometimes you take a shot, like yeah. just out of like to make them like hold up, don't disrespect mm -hmm. like that. Y'all know that these three got to get the rock, but don't just be disrespectful. Yeah. And if you miss and come out, at least you can sit and live with yourself. Like hey. <laughs> Because it's the worst thing ever when you know, they know that you got to pass them yeah. the ball. And so they like, let them go. That's, that's a tough situation, especially when you know you can score. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, you won chips, and the NBA won chips abroad. Still in your early 30s, still, still young, obviously. But you're playing in a G League with a bunch of young guys. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like they were receptive to the knowledge you were given, or they kind of treat you like, like you're an old head, and they, you know, they don't want to listen? Nah, nah they, they listen, because in practice, I was taking it to them. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm first in all the sprints, one-on-ones, and all the drills. They know I'm young. I'm older than them, but I'm still, my body's young. So they listen. And I didn't try to come in, like, telling them what to do. I let them talk. I listen to hear them to see how they learn. And then that's how my approach to them, because some guys I could go right at and just be like, hey, young fella, don't do that. That's trash. And then other people, you kind of kind of massage a little bit like, young fella, listen, let me tell you something. You talented, but if you want to stay at this level, point guards got to have a two to one, three to one ratio. So trying the tricky move in the first quarter, wait, figure the defense out, come off, see what they doing first. So you got to, you know, these guys are a little bit more sensitive. Yeah. So you got to know which guys you can be like, Tell him he terrible, and he going to be like, all right, let me show you, versus a guy where you got to be like, hey, young fella, you're going to be all right, but just think about this next time. And you learn that as you get older. You, you learn. It's almost like being a coach. A vet, veteran player is almost like a coach. You got to know, know your troops. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the most important thing you said was you beat him in every... For sure. Beat him in every sprint up and down. So sure. when you started talking, they they don't yeah. they don't hit the list. They ain't looking like, it's old. Uh, old he, he ain't even practicing. He <laughs> yeah. ain't doing... Yeah, that. he was. Like, nah. He becomes, Mm-hmm. And you have any interest in getting into coaching? Because you sounding like a coach right now on this couch, just, just the way you're talking. <laughs> I'm open to it. Okay. I don't close the idea of nothing, really, man. I'm open to trying just about anything. Because the game, basketball, is what we know. We've been doing mm -hmm. it for so long. It's not like you got to make up nothing. You just, this is what comes when you're around the game. You're around great players. You listen to them. It's just like, it's just the result of it. So I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. Why, you know somebody got to need a... I mean, <laughs> you come over high school, <laughs> I'm mad. stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it. You can get a player development job right now. Yeah, fact. Like right, like right now. 
Yeah, yeah. NBA team young, you still up. can play. Yeah. Now you young, yeah. you still can play. That's what they're looking for. They told me, yeah, this. yeah right, hey, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, from experience, for real, had a job on the table, and had seven major surgeries. <laughs> me, seven major ones on knees. Mm -hmm. Everything I bring to the table, I'm honest with them. Listen, if you're looking for me, because I'm talking to the other assistants, yeah, we play, we this, the third player development. I'm like, cool. I, I can give you a couple days a week if that's, but going up and down, probably not so much. You half court. I can get token, but the fact that I couldn't go daily, I ain't, got, I ain't get the job. Oh, so that's a real thing. Yeah. No, yeah, they want, yeah, they want to play like. Uh, yeah, player development, yeah. Yeah, Dante Jones, Dante, he said, yeah. <laughs> I'm out there hooping. I can do that for real. He said, too, I'm like, thinking about starting shit. Everybody start getting hurt. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> that's my thing. And I'm, ain't that I'm, what, when I'm Gary Payton Jr., ain't that what happened with him? When he. Doing some player development, then they I call you so. and play yeah. in the playoffs. They're like, you know what? We need a body. Yeah. He got a plan. Like, just got him a contract. <laughs> get, get out there, join to get hurt. Now you're the last one to get treatment. Like, nah. nah, nah. <laughs> can't get on the table. Can't get on the table. Now it's six thirty the night before I get home. But, <laughs> but that makes that makes no sense though, too. Though, like you got veterans out here who's playing, but the game is not simplified. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it, Gil. You know what I mean? It's like. Huh? Like what? What player development? I, I mean, I know the the players that's over in Washington or the players. I don't know who's over in Golden State, but it's like, yo, some of you guys, like, you know, you got them, you, you got them beat right here. Take this shot first. Yes. Next time he do this, now you can counter. You already threw a first counter out there. What, what's after this? And Get you don't need the counter. The guy standing back there. What are we countering for? Just take the space <laughs> up. <laughs> take the space Just up. take the space up. <laughs> Rhythm dribble. Yep. You was good at that. Yep. You would only do the one two if a cat crowded you. But other than that, it was. Uh, yep, yep. yep. Yeah, it was like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no force. Yeah, I, no, no wasted. Yeah, I, I don't like the wasting. Uh -uh. That wasn't in my game. Like I couldn't do all that. I'd be looking stupid because I'm lefty. Yeah, yeah. I got to get straight to the point. Yeah, straight to the yep. point. Some days. That's never been my game either. I never was a fancy dribbler. It was. I guess like it's like hard one two dribble. Well, I'm gonna give you a little tidbit. You, you play for one of the great organizations that bring players back to coach, so reach out. What happened? Say less. Huh? I got What'd you. What'd you say? I can't hear I'm over helping the man. Yeah, oh, okay. So, oh, hey, oh, hey, yeah. Oh, they're doing their own thing. The player coach. They got nope. the player coach over there. That's all. Yeah, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> nowhere, no better place to start than there. I don't know how your relationship is. Seems like. Nah, it's really good. Start there. Yep. So, so speaking of that organization, it's been in the news lately. Uh, oh, oh, okay. LeBron was socially active on Tuesday. Mm. Uh, he took to Twitter to double down <laughs> on his dominance hey, with Gil, or without his four seasons. I've been waiting on this. Yeah, hey, I've been waiting on this. <laughs> Ready? We know he had to come back. He said, "You damn right, I would still be. I'm chosen. Ain't nothing changing that. Maybe less rings, but dominant from start to finish." And that, that was on him basically saying he was going to be dominant no matter what. Facts. So, Norris, we're going to start with you. Uh, do you agree with LeBron's assessment of his dominance, regardless if he played with the Heat or not? Yes, I believe. I mean, he was dominant when he came there. He had <laughs> coming off of, what, two MVPs in three years. Um, as a player, he was going to be dominant. I think what Miami helped him do, though, was put some structure in on, like, detailed things. It was subtle things, mm -hmm. but there was nothing dramatic that, you know, that took place. It was subtle things that helped him turn into being one of the one of the all-time greats to being in that, you know, go discussion, those subtle things. So but he was gonna be, he was he was gonna be him no matter what. You know, he was coming in there averaging 27, 28, 8 and 8, no, no matter where he play at on his earth, that's just what he gonna do. So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, like it like I understand what Shannon Sharp was trying to say, but like like you gotta go through, you gotta go back in history to see what he was doing and where he was at the, he was 25 years old. So the fact that, that you're saying that he wouldn't have been. It would look different though, Gil. It would look different if he would it? Miami. Yes. He started getting that post in Miami. And that, that yeah, made him, yeah, un, man, that started to make him really un- Fuck un all that. This man scored 25 straight fucking points in the NBA game, dog. It's a fact. In, in Cleveland. In Cleveland. This yeah. man scored 25 straight points. Not the team. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Not the Cleveland Cavaliers yeah. scored 25 straight. Yeah, this exactly. man scored 25 straight points. So like, the dominance, yes. Pro, like he said, less rings? Yeah. yeah definitely. But that's what I'm saying. Two rings. Two rings. I have two rings. Two, no. maybe three. You have two rings. But 
Top uh, two rings. Dominant, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if, he was going to be dominant. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was going to be dominant no matter what. The, the, the thing you have to do when you're trying to get rid of somebody's career, you have to say, all right, if we're going to get rid of the rings, where are we going to replace them with? Scoring titles? All right, give them the scoring titles. Okay. Now y'all mad, no, right? Who, who would be mad? No, but uh, what I'm saying is you give them, like, there's one thing that they're going to always miss. How you guys feel about LeBron today, if he never goes to Miami, you guys don't hate him. That's one thing you guys have. That's a fact. You yeah. guys have the no, hatred hate from him, him. No, they would. because no, he no, they would. Hate no, 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 they no. still hate him. No, no, they, no, they, no. They still hate him. No, they would. He would. He would be dominating no, the league. No, 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 they would. No, 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 no. B. No, they would. B. Well, they would. When still he hate went him. there, he would be that, looked at in the same light as the Kobe, Dirk, Dirk, the Kobe, yes, the guy. He would. They would hate him. Absolutely. Think about where absolutely. I'm fighting that. Where you think? Where you think Dark Thirty came from? They hate. They hate. They hate him when he first came into the league. No, no, not like that. That was not the media. Not the media. He yeah, was the media dark. Nah, MJ I, I, is not hater. Bro, they still would have hated him because he would have been dominating but, everything. No, no, yeah, what I'm saying is think about when they when the media as a they, they, they treated this nigga like he was OJ. There would never would have been a decision. Where's, where's listen, OJ? There when he went to Miami, listen, all of them. Where's there would have never been a comment on taking my talent to South Beach. More than Mike, all that. You would have all that. Like the South Beach comment would have never happened, B. Think about yeah. Think about all of all of the things that they criticized him for is. After he went there, before that, they was not killing this man's legacy. No, no. They killed his legacy because he left. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about no. The only thing they were saying about him was the media as a whole. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it became it became a dark mark, and that's what they're gonna they always use. So if you're gonna take away those championships, you take away this too. The media would have been mad just the fact that he's breaking all the records and say he get two rings. Okay, he get two rings, and I'm still breaking everything Mike and them did. They gonna still hate on that. Nah, not and the, the fact way they that did. he got to. Not you know, the way, not, it, it wouldn't have been. He became a real villain, man. They, he became a villain because of that hey, fucking hey, press conference. Yeah. Sure. And I because lived in Cleveland. That, because of that was interview, it was. I still think they would have hated him though. They nah, still would have hated him. Not the way they did now. Because they still would have hated shit. him. Because of that shit. But that's what this this man's 25 and years old. And the colors came. It was very you know the red made it. This is it's 25 years old. You're talking about going to a a a culture which I didn't I don't understand because. G is real. I'm Shit, they still but, get Kyrie. It's real. But but history is history, though, right? It, it, now, this is when we want to talk about legacies in history. We're going to talk about Pat Riley's history, right? What is this culture? Because when he was at the Lakers, right, what was their team? Magic, that before him. Showtime. They, they they showtime. Went, but they ain't win until he took over. As no, the no, no, coach. no, no. They won a championship already. The Lakers won a championship. They, Magic's rookie year, so, but they had yeah. won two years after that without no, no, winning no. one. So they won a championship. The next year, Magic got hurt. They end up losing. During that third year, that, that championship, the coach was there. He replaced the coach. Yes. They won a championship that year. Pat Roddy's first year there. Then they got, after you win a championship, James they got Worthy. James Worthy as the number one pick. Right? Come on. That's, that's, and then that was a fast break team. Where did your fast break shit go after you left? Because Magic it was didn't. Different in New York. Magic, I mean, it was different in New York. You know? Magic didn't listen to them. Magic, quote, he was not our coach. We coached our team. Just sit there with your fucking suits on, look cute, and then with the slick back. Yeah, it's only one. Nah, but he did give, have him in supreme shape though. They conditioning changed when Pat took over. Probably. That's what I'm saying. Probably. But yeah, because ain't nobody here doing easy run. I see. Right. <laughs> you know, the easy run. Right. But when did the easy run come in? Fuck that shit. When did the easy run come in? I have no idea. But that's see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. When was easy run there when when uh, when Shaquille O'Neal and James Posey and Antoine. was Antoine Walker partying every motherfucking it's night in the club? The Andy, Shaq bro. didn't do no easy run, my nigga. Shaq <laughs> didn't do no. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I is can, it? <laughs> nah, I bro. Promise, promise you. I'm trying to ask. Ask Shaq. Shaq didn't do it. I mean, ask Shaq, hey. bro. Listen, I'm trying Act to tell you. that he had to do the Indian run one time I'm, like this, I'm, I'm, to I'm, run around the gym. I'm trying, trying to tell you, easy run. I'm trying to tell you that shit sounds cool today. That that team you that that team they had when Dwayne Wade's second year, they got Shaq, mm -hmm. like they didn't win, and then they brung in Antoine Walker. All this. Uh, all the veterans, the club heads. They were so good and talented. If you look at that roster, 12 out of the 15 was first round, I mean, uh, lottery picks. Right, so they were so talented that they didn't listen to that man. They in the strip club every night. <laughs> they built, they had a basketball court and a barbershop in there because they was there so long. I heard like, about that. We ain't gonna practice. We'll just shoot hoops here. That's how, that was that team. Where was the heat culture then? It was still heat culture though. 
<laughs> Those dudes can barely walk today because they, <laughs> they used to have to still practice coming in drunk from the from the spot. That's what, man. So, you've been in you've been in heat culture. <laughs> what does heat culture mean to you? Uh, just accountability. Everyday accountability. They don't they don't let you. You know how some people will criticize you one day, hold you accountable, but then it's like, ah, uh, not really. They hold you accountable every day, every week. Weight and body fat, conditioning test. Our conditioning test is probably the toughest in the league. Mm -hmm. For sure, it's the toughest in the league. <laughs> and back in the day, before before all the you know shoe deals and stuff are really really popular now, and the NBA changed the rules to where you don't have to wear team color shoes. But Pat used to make you know have to wear. Everybody almost wore the same color shoe. Brian kind of changed that up though, cause. Brian was like, hey, listen, I got promotions. I got my CarMax shoes coming out. I got different <laughs> shoes. So, so, you know, when we go to the garden, you know, Brian got a different, you know, yeah. shoe. And then at halftime, he's switching for Nike promotion. So yeah. if, even if the NBA were fine, Nike would pay the fine because he's like, you know, we got shoe promotion. So Pat kind of backed off then. But as soon as Brian left, he was right back on it. Right and back on. When we wear red and white, we, we wearing white shoes. We wearing red shoes. We wearing black shoes. So he believed in, like, accountability. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you're... Old school stuff. But that's what I'm saying. You're, if you have a culture, right, it, it goes from no one breaks your culture. Nobody. If it is, so when you say shacking them where they're doing their own thing, fuck off, and they won a championship, right, and then shacking them leave, and then, all right, we got a culture again, and then LeBron James and them come in there, and then it's like, all right, LeBron want to do what he want. And then when he leaves, He didn't get to do like, everything right, he wanted, though. He, know, he had to, he, that's why they, they bumped heads sometimes, because he didn't get to do everything he wanted. But you got to let him be him to get the benefit, because mm -hmm. he culture helped him, but he helped yep. us, too, though. Like, mm -hmm. let's not get that mistaken. He helped, he culture, too. So it was like always a balancing act, like let him off the leash a little bit, but then try to bring him back in. Because you got to let, let him, him be him. Leash regardless. No, I mean, nah, yeah. but... But Pat, nah, nah, Pat don't, he don't care who you are. Them, ring, them, yeah. them rings, man, gave him a whole he different He got a whole power. different set of power, bro. I'm he gonna got be a honest whole different you. power. I, was like, I ain't never seen no Godfather type stuff in real life. Like He's really like Michael that. Cardi he knows everything that everybody's doing <laughs> at all times. <laughs> yes. Even if you ain't doing nothing. Yeah, so I'm glad I made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> I made the right decision because me and Pat would have bumped heads. So, so we got you oh, here. But the, but the, he, and guess 30, what? But he cool with that. Oh, but he going to let you... 3.30, yeah, I know, I mean, yeah, you can't tell, I'm a grown ass man, I got kids <laughs> in the house, you can't tell me I can't go out, dog, you can't, you ain't gonna keep your tabs on me, I'm, yeah, I would probably tell It ain't you. that he say you can't go out, it's just that he knows, well, that is, and if you have a rough day, tab. you come in the next day, you have a rough day, you're like, oh, he was, was out last night, yeah, huh? Absolutely, and I'm gonna tell you. Absolutely. Who's dry snitching? And, 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 and guess what I'm gonna tell you? He just he know, knows the listen, owners of the, every he establishment. Listen, no, guess everything in there. It might. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's what I'm leave without him knowing. I had a fuck. Imagine that. Class, I know, oh, yeah, but you that's what I'm here. But, that, but, that, but, that, <laughs> that, but that's what I'm saying. He knows everything. He knows everything. But you got what time the game tonight? You got your whole team sitting in the strip club every night, but you can't do nothing because they were so talented and you fuck what you're saying because it's a group of them. I'm about to say it's a group. It's a group. And they putting in work though. Yeah, they putting in work too. Yeah. Yeah. They were still they working. They used seven to that, of my though. starters in the strip. I mean, seven yeah. of my best players in the strip club. Pat Riley can't say nothing then. My first seven. Yeah, my, my first, first seven. my starters and my first two <laughs> off the bench hanging out together. <laughs> what I'm gonna do? That's what I said. Like Pat Riley could What talk seed were they though? They wasn't the number one seed though. No, they wasn't. That, so no, no, they wasn't. They might have been if they um, maybe. Like uh like Gary Payton had to convince Shaq to stand down on du Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, let Dwayne take the lead. Let him do like, it. Like, Cause Shaq was first team all. People don't yeah. know they were talking about Shaq was on the decline. He was first team all NBA that yeah, year. Yeah, it was like, like let, let, let young, we're gonna go through young boy, and Shaq's like, all right, yeah, best thing he ever did. Yes. So, got a question for you. You don't got to answer it if you don't want to, but something I need to know: Did Pat Riley really take LeBron's chocolate chip cookies off the Heat team plane? I don't. I I never saw that. <laughs> I'm gonna just say that. But I that never saw that. Cookies. Okay. We had cookies on there. Okay. Okay. There was cookies on there. There was cookies. Yeah, was there yeah, ever a yeah. point where there was no cookies? <laughs> <laughs> I never saw. Hey, but, so I never, so but it is strict though on there, depending on the team. So there was a, so, so there was a like no, no, no. no uh, junk, it wasn't a bunch of junk food. There was no junk food on there. But there was, no on but there was cookies yeah. on the plane at one point. What year was that they did that? There was this the, is, the year he left? The year. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, different when he no, left. So it was different. When Ron left, it was different. I'll just say that. It was different. Yeah, it was so there, there was a point when there was cookies on the plane, yeah, yeah. and there was a point where there was no cookies on the plane <laughs> during the LeBron. Oh, that is funny. Yo, stuff went from being marginally strict uh -huh. to, to being back like, to... Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> and you, if you're there, you notice the difference. Yeah. <laughs> no, we was with the Knicks. You know me, I was, a young, I was a young fella, a rookie at first. Then by the time I was the fourth year, I was learning a little bit. But I learned, I just watched. I ain't get into yeah. no politics or... Hey, man, what you think of that young fella? Hey, man, I don't know. You know me? <laughs> yeah, I, ain't, I ain't getting into it. What's I crazy is, since we've been there, the shit that a player gets mad at has no impact on nothing but the ego. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. like yeah. Speaking of cookies, Park, to your yeah. point. Yeah. Parking yeah. spot, nigga. I can't get my parking spot no more. Yeah. Oh, I want yeah. this motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, uh, yo, be real mad in practice. That, remember, uh, Academy be real mad if you put, especially on game day. Game day, you, you pull up on the wrong spot on game day. That's his feeling. Yeah. They'll make you leave. Hey, hey who's a... Uh, get the keys to Al. Get that spot. Get that out of my spot. Yep. You seen that happen? Man, man, yeah, bro, I'm telling well, you. Just that, yeah. Parking spot. I knew my as a young I had I had my parking spot. It was always away from all the, you know, uh -huh. the most sayings and all that. Make sure my spot was <laughs> far away from them. They could never be like like uh -huh. move move young fellas car. I know I'm far. Where they were uh, where Bondi? Where they where they park at? Are they parked down here? Okay, I'm I'm over here. Stay uh -huh. out their way. <laughs> That's real thing, man. Cookies. Uh-huh. <laughs> we on the team plane. <laughs> This is finna come across horrible, mm -hmm. but because of the recent pitch I seen. But Raymond Felton was on the plane. We <laughs> team, they passed out cookies. Mm -hmm. The lady on the plane skipped over him. Mm. So they didn't told on the plane he can't have nothing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Listen, this man flipped out. Fuck you mean I can't have no kid? I'm a grown ass man. Or you can't tell. <laughs> Listen, man, you know, we had mm -hmm. weight and all that. So mm -hmm. the team, they told who could have. She little. then skipped over this man on the plane, dog, and then get him the cookie. Listen, dog, this man was livid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was over that motherfucker. We sit at the card table, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four people at the card table, so you know, it's three people get cookies, and she don't. Oh, you, you should not. Oh, no, they say you can't. Boy, I was over that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they did big decks of Pittman like that. They, they did? Big, they used to do big decks like that. He couldn't, certain stuff he couldn't eat, at least not around the team. <laughs> but that, but see, that's not good because then you got to go sneak eat cookies. No, but you definitely go sneak and eat. Not, but what I'm in saying, the bathroom. Sure. But no, that's just, what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's just something that's simple like that. What ends mm -hmm. up happening to your ego is you doing this on purpose now. Right? This is, oh, this, you, this is where we at. So when you're talking about free agency and there's $100 million here and there's $75 million here, them cookies say, fuck your $25 million. I'm going over here. Nah, for, people don't yeah. people don't realize that. Like for most sure. of these people that's leaving, it had to do with something that had to do with they felt. Oh, you this is you they doing this purpose right? Yeah, you ain't treat me right. My parking spot, my locker. You done moved my locker. You done. I got this locker and an extra one. You done put somebody here knowing damn well I done had two lockers for. <laughs> right, the funny, I got a funny story when I first got to the Heat, right? Because you know it was a lockout mm -hmm. uh, until like our first game was Christmas. So we showed up in December. We got to practice for a couple weeks. When I first walked in, they put me, Brian always got two lockers. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm green. Mm -hmm. I walked in, and they did it as a joke. Now that I know, they did it on purpose. <laughs> so they put me right next to Brian. He only had one locker. They put me right there, and I'm thinking it's cool. You know, he from Ohio, they from that place. They just put the cats from Ohio next to each other. I don't know. So he walks in the locker room, and he walks in, what's up, fellas? And then was like, made a funny look, and was like, what's, what's going on around here? <laughs> and, 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 and so, and so, you know, D was like, D-Way, he already know D-Way was like, he just put his head down. And then he was like, oh, what's up, young fella? Everything all right? I'm like, yeah, everything cool. So he sat down. We go through, you know, I put my stuff on for practice. I go upstairs. After practice, I come downstairs, all my stuff gone. <laughs> <laughs> to the locker over there. And I'm like, and he came down all smiley face and all that. He put the word in. As soon as I walked out of his sight, he walked in the training room and had to cuss them out. I'm like, hey. Y'all know, don't do young fella like that. Don't have me looking at him crazy. Because he came in and looked crazy like, what's going on who in gave, here? Who gave you the locker? Who, who told you that was? Team manager. Yeah, the team, team, the team, team manager. manager. You, when you're a rookie, when you're a rookie, you just go where they tell you to go. I had it was a rookie thing. Yeah. Like, like a rookie job. Listen, they had to go you're get the little, the, manager, the little portable man. locker. I had two lockers the mm -hmm. whole time I was there. I let two people sit right there. Ruben Patterson, mm -hmm. DeMar Johnson for a little bit. Okay. Cincinnati guys. Other than that, my seven years in Denver. Seven. Everybody know, don't sit on that other yeah. Two. This right here. Now, yeah. This one doesn't ain't nobody. They had to go get the portable lock and put it, <laughs> the little cubby thing. Yeah, you can sit right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's a real thing. No, no, and if, no, and no. if they would have enforced that and be like, nah, he's sitting there, that's his locker, Cat gonna remember that from free agency. Yep. 
Two years ago, y'all made young fellas, y'all let a rookie sit in my chair, y'all ain't give me my respect, I'm out of here. It's an important thing. That's what Detail. I'm saying. Come on, you, come on, Heady. man. That's what I said, man. There's, <laughs> there's little things. Yeah, with, yeah. If your team, if a player lead, the recent one, Kawhi Leonard. People don't ask why a player left. They just, oh, he left. Kawhi Leonard, what? right? When he said, I want Paul George, he said, I don't know anybody here. These are not my, you know, these are not my friends. I'm not Demar Johnson, right? They're looking at me sideways because of Demar, right? I, yeah, we won a championship, but they're not, you know, they won Demar. The Rosen, the Rosen, I mean, the Rosen, yeah. Demar Rosen. Yeah. You yeah. ain't like I said the name, name wrong. You said Demar Johnson. Demar Johnson. Oh, I did some more Demar. You said Demar Johnson. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, that was Demar Johnson. Because he said Demar Johnson. I know what you meant. Demar Johnson. But you have haters out there in the universe. Even Demar Johnson. Everybody in the Rondo. Yeah, so he. So he. Everybody in the Rondo. Yeah, so he. So that's all he wanted. I want someone that I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah
People didn't realize Antoine Jameson went there, Shaquille O'Neal went there. They were just getting the, the wrong people. Yeah, and they, when they it was, was getting vet minimal like yeah, that. Yeah, but that when, point. Time, when it was time to really pay that money to bring people up, there were so many free agents that anybody could have came. They didn't. I don't think nobody really wanted to come to Cleveland though. Nobody wanted to come. Yeah, Bosch told them fuck off. Nah, New York I, been crazy. I lived in Cleveland. What nobody? New York would have been the biggest. What nobody you know, coming to Cleveland, bro? You played. You played that in Cleveland problem. State. Nobody was. I was. Yeah. How, then, how does Cleveland State compare to South Beach? I mean, come, come on. on. I'm just asking. Boy, you, I, I mean, I ain't gonna. Don't, we ain't gonna disrespect Cleveland. It's like not that. a disrespect. But, but it's a different world, though. It's not Cleveland. a disrespect. It's 1990. Yeah, I'm a little bit more biased because Cincinnati is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> but it's no. But it's no. It's, no, it's different. You're right. It, yeah, it's, it's even even Haslam. People didn't. People didn't realize the two key pieces to that whole thing was Mike Miller and Haslam. For sure. But I, that's why I will, if I, he would have went somewhere else. Do he have that though? They would have won and been successful, but do they get over the top without them and without that structure? Without them sure. taking a pay cut? Oh, or, no, but that's what I'm saying. Those are players though. That's what I'm saying. The Heat culture, you didn't convince Haslam to take that pay cut that he got offered with 40 some million and he came back for nine. That was him and D Wade said, hey man, I'll take less money. We're going we gonna to get it right. That's, that's them. They had that conversation with Mickey way before Pat Riley stepped in. They let him know, hey, this is what happened. We, we come in there. They acting like Pat Riley, I got these rings. For you. What, which, ring, which rings? Nah, they, they called you and said, this is what we're doing. Make he it convinced work. them to take less, though. I don't know how he convinced all three of them to take less than the full He took $1 million. <laughs> it's, it's a respect <laughs> but, thing, though. But I'm, all but three I'm, of them was worth the, the max, and all three yeah. of them took... Yeah. D-Wade took the, the most off 107, the table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he took 107. Made up for it. He, that was it. Yeah. He took but you can have both. Man, made up for it. They, couldn't, uh, they wouldn't have got rings and they, they wouldn't. No, no, no. But, right. think, but, but think about who took the pay cut. Like, Dwayne Wade took $3 million less. LeBron and Bosh took $1 million less. Mike Miller turned down 30, right? Haslam, Haslam. Haslam turned down a guap from Denver. Ha Haslam took that pay cut to make it all happen. He did. So he waited to the end. Figure that out, and then I'll take whatever's left over. And they and paid then, him in four these last three, four years. They yeah. made up for that, yeah. too. They, and then the rest of that team <laughs> That's is... That's why he won't yeah, The, the, the rest of that team, like, like people talk about, like, oh, they this team... Just, the rest of that team was sorry as fuck. It was a bunch of $1 million players I was old as fuck. Which team? Our? That first year, LeBron's first year there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the Mavs... The, 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 the man, they, 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 they couldn't even come off the bench there. What it was this? Picking LeBron up full court with a small guard, running his energy down. No, that's they can't they, That's why they drafted me. A yeah, they could fast, little fast dude to guard little JJ and Jason Terry and guys like that. Yeah. So that they didn't have to do it. Yeah, he's picking up, they picking him up full court. Now he got to try to run the offense. And then now he got to post up. They going to come and double. They yeah, running still, all this yeah. defense at him. It was... But still, you're supposed to punish them little cats. Yeah, you're supposed to punish them. Yeah. What do you mean? But he know that, though. And that's why every year since then, he been punishing people. That's what I said. I, I played against him. We, we played against him three years, so I watched what it was. I was at y'all games. Oh, you was? I was up in there. Okay, 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 yeah. Yep. Y'all always play them like first round. Yep. And I was, that was the only playoff games I could go to. Yep. I find a way to get a ticket. <laughs> Shit, it was affordable. It was affordable. It was, it was affordable. Man, in Cleveland State, you find a way to get your you ticket. You make your moves to get <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. Every year, every year they play. They played y'all twice, three, three, three years, years in a row. I, yeah, I got, I got one, I got one good year, and then I was hurt. I about to say the one year you won, y'all won a game in Cleveland. You shot a shot almost from half court and did the, <laughs> did the and I was like, I couldn't. I was, just, like, I was kind of mad at you because you know I was a Cleveland fan. I'm mm -hmm. like, but he out here showing out on us tonight, like. <laughs> <laughs> you should, literally, you shot on Booby yeah, Gibson from, and then turned like, around man, like. Hey, I, I, I used to be mad because we was more talented than, him, but they kept beating us because of him. Like, yeah, man, y'all sorry without him. Yeah, I used to sit on like y'all are sorry without him. Let him sit down for five minutes. Let him sit down for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> sit down for five minutes. So I got something for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a big brother. You know your big brother can fight, so you can act tough as you want. Oh, I'm so hot, dog. Sound like. See, y'all didn't realize when he first came into the league. When when Braun first came into, he was a shooting guard. He was literally the shooting guard. He had to guard me. Oh, I got I got tape video bopping him. Like, oh, oh, you could oh yeah. Cause he was the tuna. He was like, I'm guarding him, he's guarding me that very his very first year. And then people don't realize he grew. He did he he grew. He was he, he was a legit six eight. Like, oh he's a little guy, little guy right out here. Like I got him in the post. And then there was one year like, hold on, hey man. Who guard him now? They ain't even yeah. like Twan, he over here, Tyron Twan, like Jared Jeffries. And that's when Jared had to guard him. He's a problem, bro. Yeah. He's a problem. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> but you got <laughs> he he just didn't quite say it right. Like, 
LeBron said it perfectly. He said, I might have less rings. He said, but I was on a war path to be dominant, like, because he was. He, I, I, I just would have killed everything, Mike. I just, no, he I'm was sure. killing everything. It ain't no, he wouldn't. No, no. He was already killing everything I, moving. I, by the age of 25, LeBron was already a six time All Star, two time MVP, runner up, defense player of the year. That wasn't Mike yet. At the, at, the, at the same 25. All it took was back then, it was funny. Easy. One person got a one ring and he got a motherfucking NBA logo. He's the NBA logo. Michael Jordan had one ring. He's the greatest thing on earth. He was shit. He was damn near the greatest thing on earth before he won a championship. I but mean, Mike was the best before. He, I know, but that's the, what I'm saying. The, the champ just solidified. That, yeah, that's a, Nobody the had, they had never seen nothing like but him. But that's the one that pe people don't want to talk about. We will never. No, we will, and we will never. But what I'm saying is when you think about how the players after Mike was treated, right, it became a multiple championship to be considered great when the greatest man that is being compared to got it off of one. He got rid of Magic Johnson's legacy, Bird's legacy. Every legacy after that was just one championship, but now it's like, well, you, you, you need six to even get in this category. But for him, though, <laughs> but my, my Not even. thought process didn't change until he won three in a row. It was an interview, I just watched it two days ago. He said, when he, after he won his third one, that's where he really felt like he was above their level. Like, when he felt, yeah. Because he was like, he said, they won back to back. He said, none of them ever won three in a row. Mm -hmm. I won three in a row. Now I feel like I can look at them eye to eye and be like, I'm that guy. I can feel like. like he I would never it. say himself is the greatest. He never said that, but he was like, I felt like I was as accomplished or more after I got my third one. Because they never won three in a row. Yeah. Yeah, they go play baseball and humble themselves. Nah, it was just back like mind. when you when you go when, right. when you go when you go back in history and then look at the journey of them, you're ne they can't they're never gonna remove him. Okay. He he was so impactful. People didn't like like he went from the Jordan went from the wings, like it seemed like it was a campaign his third that third that year on his Jordan three. It seemed like it was a campaign. He got his logo, Jumpman, right? That's when he won. That's when the Nike signs stopped being off of him. Yep, that's and when they started putting logos. Every, yeah, on. that's a MVP, All Star, MVP. Every, he got every guy. <laughs> 1988 was crazy. Now, 19 he won everything but a chip. But a chip. MVP, like, like scoring they, check, dunk check, steals check, had 10, 11 straight triple doubles, led the league in. Yeah. The, that, that, that year, year it's like they they went into that year like, all right, Nike, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, we, we, you ready? We ready? <laughs> he we ready. Gonna, he ready. Yeah, right. leg, we ready. <laughs> we need this one individual to get us over the top. And let's go. All these dudes should be thanking him. All these signature okay. shoot dudes, they better be thanking this cat. Because there wasn't no such thing as negotiating your own brand. Like, now cats can get their own, their own logos and share it with the brand. But Mike ain't know nothing about that. No. Nike still owns the, the jump man. Like he can't separate from them if he wanted to, or he had to get a whole new logo. Yep. And that's... And, and oh, well. But that's why they paying $50 million every year to the to the to cash to drop, though, because... Yep. And that's, <laughs> what that's what I'm saying. It's, it's crazy. When, yep. you, when, you, when you think about the thing he did, it's what we have now. And that's what they're never going to remove. It, it, that's it's, why it's, he's it's, transcended. That's why nobody can ever... That's yeah. why he cemented but his But that's place. why I said it. The, the, they don't need to start throwing in, oh, he got six and this and this. Like, listen, just, we get it. Yeah, for <laughs> the sure. fuck? Yeah, yeah. Right, nah, we get yeah. it. And stop using... The stop minutes. fucking up everybody else's legacy, comparing it to a guy you're not going to... You're not going to get off the, the, that, that mountain. Yeah. If you go back in history, we see it. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. and we we see what the we, see we know what the NBA needed at that moment in time, and it was God mode, and he delivered like he was yeah. supposed to. But don't hold that. Against. Don't hold that against everybody else. Just say, hey, listen, number one, this motherfucker, we gonna put this in bubble wrap. Yep, and see, everyone man. fight for number two, like. Bet. <laughs> I got I got 14 rings over here. Yeah, for sure. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six MVPs. No Number matter. two. But that's what I said, but you know, I mean, you messing up everybody else's game trying to compete with somebody they think can get touched, not knowing that he was the NBA. Fact. Right. And the reason that you can't put him in the logo is it, it's gonna cost you this whole league. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Nah, if the NBA want him to be the logo, Nike gonna be like, oh, we own the NBA. Yeah, we own now. The Nike gonna be like, we own the NBA now. Nike now, gonna be like, we own it. Now, now everybody, everybody realized why. 
because he should be the logo. He can't change the logo. because yes. Change it to the cigar from the last day. They can't change the logo, and I don't think you can find anybody ever in basketball to market like that in the NBA. Not like, like that. Jordan's like, logo was like, just like as impactful Mike as logo. the regular like, NBA like logo. Mike, like how Mike you're right. did. His logo, the logo and there's no that. other logo that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with but, that NBA logo. Would you say it's more impactful, though, when you really think about it? I mean, in the, in the, in the urban society, in, in, yeah. I mean, yeah, to, yeah, anytime. that's like the Apple. It's yeah. like the Apple sign. Hey, yeah. Not for real. In urban not, society. You're really huh. robbing over the NBA yeah. logo. You're robbing But that's what I'm saying. It's kids that never had the NBA jersey. That it has several pairs of mics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now you can put NBA, every NBA jersey and put them Jordans next to it, and every in every signature Jordan in every color. Yeah, yeah that's the logo. That, I mean, that's what I said. They, they can't get. They can't put it as a logo because. Yeah, bro. It's Shaquille too powerful. Callion say they're killing over Jays. Hey, it, it's low key bigger than the NBA. I haven't what? seen nobody line up. The Jordan logo. When the new when Nike came out with the new sponsor for the, I didn't see those lines sold out. Every new Jordan that come out that's on repeat. It's still the line oh, is around it. And these the same ones, the same color. They cost more now than they did yes. then, which is, you know. Just, re yeah, yeah. just keep repeating the ones with 13. Hey, 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 hey. hey no, Levis, don't forget the hey, I lived, in, I said, one I lived in the valley and never seen so many cutlass. Was them, those them cars, them, them hood cars? The 90 was the, uh, the cutlass. cutlass. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I never seen so many of those. At, in white neighborhoods where I was living at. Like, oh shit, we about to get robbed. Hey, I don't need the box. Just put these in some Adidas. <laughs> just put, it in, put my Jordans in the Adidas box. So you got, hey young fella, what you got? Oh, I just got the new K-Swiss. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I bet, here we go. You definitely don't you wear your Jordans to corner, basketball practice. Off. Yeah, you don't wear your Jordans to basketball practice either. You, no. Not if you in the public school, you know. Bus stop, hey listen, bus stop, all you see is socks. Shit, y'all was rich, y'all had Jordans. Hell yeah, shit. <laughs> What you have? George was huh? everything. Ooh. I had George to make straight A's. Uh, <laughs> straight A's. My pop said, if you make straight A's, I'll get you one pair. Shit. I did it one time. Never but... had no Jordans as a kid. Y'all was rich. Sure. Uh, yeah, you see I kids. Had Force Ones. You had the kid. Nah, you, trust me, you couldn't put them in your locker. Those got broken nah, bro, open. What? And then back then, you, you see a dude at the bus stop just like this. Man, you know what happened to him. You already know what happened to him. <laughs> Give me those. Oh, yeah, man. My mama just told me not to bring these. Hey, seeing dudes walk around shoeless. <laughs> I've seen dudes get their coat took and all that starters and all that kind of huh? thing. Jordan that's started. I've I seen it happen. I just wasn't a part of it because we couldn't afford it. So. Jordan but that's what I'm But Jordan nobody taking stuff anyway. But that's what I'm saying. It was, it was. No, they would. Trust me. If I'd have had it, they would try to take it. But that's what I said. It's like one of those things when it comes to this worldwide, it's going to always be Jordan. Uh, and then, you know. Everybody else. And then everybody else. <laughs> LeBron is, that's, that's just a community of just basketball, players. Basketball, like, the we shoe didn't, world. <laughs> basketball, the shoe world. And just Michael Jordan first. And just but why, why, no, why, 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 why nobody can come up with no, like people got cool designs, but why can't nobody come out with a consistent where it's like, Jordan's like, don't miss, bro. You know, when he was playing, 1 through 13. He had the best, these, the, back then it was the best designers and then he had real input. Mm. Okay. Now we now don't. Everything is a comparison to that. Cause I'm looking yeah, at other people's shoes. It's yeah. like they nice, but I'm like, it don't even like, it don't even compare. What's like, so funny is some of the shoes that we think the like, um, like if you go back and look at old interviews, he looking at some of them shoes like, yeah, we don't even these terrible. This is colorway, colors that's hitting today, or got you know like even with the patent leather, like yeah. patent leather wasn't a thing. That was way that was, was foreign. Yeah, that was foreign. That was like, oh, patent leather don't hit. Like Jordan was one of the only shoes that the patent Concours leather actually bread. Concourse the best ones that ever came out. I think it was just his style of play too. Yeah, Not for sure. Like playing his style of play. play. Like just, Ooh, like just look at Mike. It's like, oh, what? The That's why they was the he best shoe. To be this tall. It wasn't it was, the best shoe just because they was the best shoe. They was the was, best shoe because he was like he was, that. He was, he was, he was like that, so yeah. it matched his game. Like, yeah, every yep. year it was like. Then we was rocking them in Cincinnati too. Same color wave as the Bulls. Mm -hmm. 96, 97, 98 when they was on top. Yeah. Well, my Jordan game was <laughs> mean at Cincinnati. <laughs> They was more and they back to it. I love y'all. And they back to it. Y'all used to first one to come out with the uh, oh, the old and they yeah. weren't yeah. uh, and they weren't Jordan again. Idea too. Uh, that, 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 and three, that they weren't Jordan again. Y'all yeah, yeah, were y'all were Nike when I was there. Huh? Y'all were Nike when you was at uh, Jordan. Jordan. So when you was there, Jordan. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Jordan. Y'all had the North Carolina. Y'all was the first school. First. But something like that. How, how did you? And that's 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 inside Nike. Like somebody who went to Cincinnati was like, Nah, we. I'm gonna give y'all the hook up first. First one with it. You would have th that's you would have thought North Carolina would be the first, but the executives make who they want. Same color, but they was it in felt like the Cincinnati or something. I was like, yo, they was in <laughs> there meeting with hugs. Hold on, not, hold on, North Carolina. You sure North Carolina didn't have the Jordans? No, we was they had it first. 
Cincinnati had it first. I feel yeah. like he was giving them that's shoes. Okay. Y'all, they just didn't have that, a logo. That's cool. But, 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 oh, that's cool. Was the first one with it. Yeah. Don't don't. don't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was giving them shoes though at North Carolina. Okay. For North sure. Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. A and T. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. three the three schools: Cincinnati, St. John's, A&T. and North A&T. Carolina. A and T. I told you. Trust me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, don't give me. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. no, I'm just talking about schools like you 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 would think that Michael Jordan's first. Would be them. Be them when it wasn't. But, but I sure feel like North like, Carolina was like, we bigger than Jordan's. Somebody um, upstairs. I feel like somebody in North Carolina was hating it. Yeah, whatever it was, we sure appreciate like it. Was it was some hate pride. We came like, we bigger than Mike. We, don't need, we, we don't. was out there with hoods on and warm ups and the stripes on the yeah, side but, of the uniform. You know, like, like that Jordan logo, you, you got that Jordan logo. That's. It means and they, so. they back yeah, to not, it now. Yeah, I'm like, that was one of the reasons why I went to Oak Hill. Because that Jordan logo. Yeah. Like, I was able to get all the Jordans. And I had this Nike rep at Nike at the time. His name was Jeff Rogers. Where he would give me every pair of Jordans that wasn't even out yet. Yeah. Like, we had everything back then. If that, if that Jordan logo wasn't on OK, I don't think a lot of people yeah. would go. What's it's wild is right. Jordan wanted to go to Adidas. Mm-hmm. He wanted to go to Mama Adidas. Jordan, mm-hmm. though. Mama Jordan, you seen the documentary on that air? Mm-hmm. When his mother talked to me in that meeting with Nike, he didn't even want to take the meeting. No, nah, because they wasn't, they was nobody's. She she was a master negotiator. I mean, you she, see, I mean, you see what he walked into. You can be like, who, who was that there at the time? Bird. Now they was I'm, Converse. No, no, the league was Converse. The league was yeah. Converse. Yeah, Converse. Yeah, yep. but somebody wanted to compare him to when he was walking in. I think it was Converse. Yeah, he said you can be third. That's what his mom said. He's like, like so he's gonna always be behind Magic and Bird. Yeah. He was like, what's wrong with being third? She whispered in his ear like, you gotta take this Nike trip. Mm-hmm. Gotta take the yeah, same thing with Adidas. Like and Sunny V, Sunny Vaccaro again, yep. getting it done. That's the best thing ever. Kiss on bro. the cheek. The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about LeBron playing with him, but basketball IQ, you hear all these stories from other guys. You got to actually experience live it. How, how real is that basketball IQ that LeBron has? It's, it's real from the fact that, one, he really studies the game. Like, he has natural ability, but even with his natural ability, he still takes the time to study the game. So you will see him going over his, you know, going over, like, the numbers on a guy going left versus a guy going right. He remember plays, other teams' plays, like how he know our plays. And so it always gave him a step ahead. And that's why, like, when you see him, like, reacting, he's already computed what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. He knows your defense. He's a drop defense, and this guy, he's going low man help. Or drop defense, they help from this corner. So he already, mm-hmm. then he already got that program. Or they going to show early in the game, so he passed early in the game. Like, and so guess what? By the second quarter, that guy's tired of showing. He's like, he going to pass it. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you think he's going to pass it, now he's going to turn the corner. The low man's going to help. He's going to either dunk you or he's going to pass to the corner. So he, he computes the game different. And that's part of film. That's what I learned from him. Because I used to want to know, but how did you know he was going to be open? I asked D-Way the same thing. I said, how did y'all know? They was like, you study the film. Once you play against these coaches, you start knowing coaches. Coaches, yeah. Because like, he would know Doc Rivers like in and out. Like He would call <laughs> their plays out. And I'm like, Bro, look, how do you know that? He was like, he said, once you study them, and then you you get practice at it. Cause he's like, cause they playing 38, 40 minutes. He said, bro, once you play first one or two quarters, by the third quarter, I know what they're doing. Now I'm playing all downhill. Mm-hmm. And th- so it's a real thing. It's a cheat code. Cause when you on defense, cause when I played against him, when I went when he went back to Cleveland, now he know all our plays. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like he know Cole don't don't do it. Cause he know I like to <laughs> you know I like to pressure, get over pick and rolls, and certain things, and he know I'm gonna help. You know how we help it. Miami, he's like, and he'd be like, he'd be like, don't, don't, don't you do it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you do it just to see if he's going to make the play. Other times you'd be like, nah, let me not do that because he's just going to pass the ball right past your ear to the dude in the mm-hmm. corner and the, or have your man in foul trouble. Yeah. People don't realize this too. Like when you go back and look at all his plays, everyone questioned, right? Why'd you make that pass? No one ever questions every single one of those passes, those guys wide open. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on. Remember what I'm, I'm saying? For the most board. part, even the last one, right? They are he's open. going up. Yeah. Boom! That man is wide. That man is fucking wide open. So he's seeing the movement way before it came. It's not like he's making a pass at Danny Green air ball. He's wide open. He is. He's wide open. Yeah, I, I, I know because he, he's still. Danny Green. But the fact that he's making the pass though to guys that 
there's not, there's no question if the, the guy's gonna shoot it. The guy's actually yeah, wide they, open. They get paid to make those shots too, but also sometimes it's better to shoot. Shoot it, yeah. Sometimes His feet need to be facing like Cam Thomas shit. Shoot that bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All that shit, bro. I'm just, I'm just thinking about yeah, if, the, that. If, if that was a point, if that was a point guard, if that was Jason King. That was, a, that was one of us making it, that pass. They would say great pass. That is a great pass because that is, yeah. that is the, he's wide open. Like, yeah. damn. And he's a shooter. Yeah. You ain't the king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, his IQ is just real. It's real. <laughs> so we talked about the LeBron IQ, but how much of that, just the film study and the learning that side, was was a heat culture thing versus? <laughs> I just want to know. Nah, man, come on. Some guys, <laughs> guys watch film on every NBA team. I understand that, but <laughs> I'm saying, was film. their approach different or just? I'll say this, yeah, because Brown, Brown knew stuff before. Okay. You gotta remember, Brian was playing against the Heat before, and they would beat them sometimes. No, they would beat the Heat sometimes. You know, so his his pedigree of seeing the game was gonna be what it was. What Heat culture did was, you know, Brian's a master at making adjustments quickly. The Heat, what we did, we don't adjust quick. We mm -hmm. practicing on this. So the easier way might be like stop showing, just down it or whatever. Spo would be like, no, nope. we not downing it. We going we can always down it. We can always switch. We need to do this the first few months of the season so that this is our foundation and then we can transition to that. Okay. We don't okay. want our foundation to be make an adjustment every time a team do something. Because that's how Brian works. As soon as he sees something, he didn't already adjust it to it, no matter what quarter it is. And he gonna make you adjust, and then when you adjust, he adjusting again. So if you ain't got a high IQ team, he can do it. Everybody else can't keep making that many adjustments. So with the Heat was like, this is our how we gonna play. Yep. And, we gonna, and we'll lose the game sometime, yeah. but we're going to win the war because by the time we got to the finals, our shows was crisp. And then when we need to make an adjustment, they'd be like, Spo not going to make an adjustment. In the timeout, Spo going to be like, down it. <laughs> we ain't down it all year. We ain't switched all year. And then the one time, switch. And that's, that's the difference with Brian and Heat culture. That's how they kind of, that's how we made it, was it a, work. It was, a, it, was a, it was about, yeah. I, I played. That's what I'm saying. We played against them. Because like, Brian would be like, why don't we just fucking down it? Why don't, yeah, we, yeah, why don't like, we down it? And I'm like, and Spo would be like, no. And he'd be so mad, he'd go to biting this, and he'd be like, and supposed to be like, we're not down it. Yep. And me, I gotta listen to coach. I can't listen to Brian. Yep. Brian can disobey him. As a young player, I can't, I can't look at him and be like, I'm doing, mm -mm. so I'm playing, keeping it going inside instead of downing it to the sideline. I'm making him go to the middle, and Brian be like, bro, trust me, just down. I'm like, Brian, I can't do that, bro. You can do that. Yep. I get yanked out the game. Hard show, it's hard show, push him all the way to the, like, you can't, you, like, that's them, they gonna hard show a shooting, a shooting point guard, and a guard and who can't shoot. Yep, that's what Versus, we showed did. We're gonna go under, we're gonna keep rotating, they're gonna show it, like it was, I got no, the fucking defense. <laughs> The Travis Bell, I think the heat culture was always there, goddammit. <laughs> because they, they believe in just, the, like, our, mon so, our model was the most... Intense, toughest, hardest playing team. That's how they. That's, that, so that, that's the heat culture. That's the heat culture. Which, that wasn't Pat Riley's upbringing. Where, where was that at in the Lakers? Right. It just you, when did you when did you go from all offense to just defense, or they just didn't listen to you then, and then you got a team that was sorry enough. Hey, this is what we gonna do, goddammit. it. We gonna no do score. all this. It's, we got no it's score. hard. Gotta beat them with defense. <laughs> gonna beat them with defense. It's hard to tell a bunch of talented guys to play like that. Think about it. That Lakers team was. So, it was a lot of time. It's hard to tell an offensively gifted four or five of them to play dirty, nasty, because they don't have to. They don't have to. That Nick team, though, Pat, uh, Patrick Union was the only gifted offensive player. Everybody else was like, got to play off the edge a little bit. Because, I mean, you got Grant Hill in the league, you got Penny, and then you got Jordan. They ain't more Pat talented than none of them dudes, you know what uh, I'm saying? Pat was weak. I mean, just if you go through the room. No, 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 what, what I'm say saying that. is, even when, even when- They was, say stuff like that, BJ, hey. No, 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 <laughs> because you can watch you, him. What I'm saying is you, watch you coming in as a rookie, seeing it Please. then, the years before that, he layout. couldn't get out of the first round. He <laughs> so you, you saw that, I, I yeah, yeah, he, uh, first round, fuck it, I'm up there. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, come on. Jeff's like, all right, cool, all right, let's do this. You know, oh, we got, we got a shot, we got this, oh, we looking good. Hey, Jeff, get the fuck out of here, I'm coming down. Win the championship, <laughs> and then the very next year, first round, and then lose. Then it's like, yeah, back I'm, I'm going back upstairs. Like, come on. <laughs> but hey, you know it is what it is. It is what it you know is. I mean, Matt. you know it is what it is. It's, it's let's talk about Spo a little bit. You know, people credit a lot of Spo's early success with that Heat Big Three, but been back to the finals twice. Yes, sir. Last year, Gil, even talking about that roster, what he was able to do with that to get to the finals. Spo one of the goats now. Yeah. So what's Spo like as a head coach, and how does he get the most out of his players? 
One thing that makes Spo good, Spo is not one of those coaches that's stuck in his ways. He adjusts with the time and he holds himself accountable. Like he'll say like, man, I shouldn't have did it. You know how some coaches would be like, I ain't wrong, it's your fault, do it harder, do it smart. Like <laughs> Spo will look at himself and be like, I messed that up, we're gonna do it, you know, I'm gonna adjust. And as the years went by, he learned how to coach with talent, which is not easy. Most people think having a bunch of talented dudes is easy. It ain't, because those egos is crazy. crazy. It's hard to tell a dude that got more money than you, we ain't doing that. <laughs> when it's, Spo had three or four dudes that was, Ray Allen was 100 million, Rashad 100 million, LeBron, gazillionaire, D-Wade, gazillionaire, it's Chris Boss, 200 million, Jawan Howard, 100 million. And Spo had to keep all that in one bag. So he learned that, and then when they all left, he learned how to coach with less talent. So he knows all the teams. So if I got a supremely talented team, I know how to balance the egos. A team that's not that talented, I know what I got to do. Yeah. The teams that ain't that talented, they in there working like slaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all working, no, no. but they working like <laughs> slaves so that they can compete at the highest level against more talented teams. That's how the Heat be winning. That, but that's what I'm saying. That, that is the, they <laughs> that's play, the Heat culture, right? That's the right? culture, for real. I don't have the talent no more. They play but, harder than all the uh, other teams. But because of my name and because of what these, these generational players have gave me, mm -hmm. I, get to, I get to really bust their ass. They, have, they cannot question me. They can't question. Right? And, and, they, and Pat is not going to fire him. No, I know. He told, even the big three was there. He had, they, they was having meetings with Spo all the time <laughs> and all that. Pat, do his big when he blow the whistle, everybody be quiet. Mm. I ain't never seen no stuff. <laughs> He's like a big whistle. He got, he got the big whistle, whistle like the big. Hey, no, listen. Everybody I thought, be quiet. I never seen nothing like this before in my life, cause Spo got the whistle. Mm -hmm. Spo blew the whistle. We was getting ready for practice. He walked out that office and, <laughs> and even Spo jumped and turned around and he said, "Oh, everybody on the wall, coaches, everybody." We all sat on the wall and sat down, and he said, "There's no more meetings." He's going to be the coach. He ain't going nowhere. I'll follow my sword before he go anywhere. I'll leave before he leave. There's no more meetings. There's no more discussion about him going nowhere. And, and then that was the discussion. And he That's your rookie year? He had that two or three times. <laughs> your rookie year? No. He, my, third, my fourth year when Brian left, it was some, you know, it was a new team. Mm -hmm. And there was some, some stuff going on. And he had to remind the new guys, hey, he's not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Y'all better get in line with him or y'all going to be gone. It's, it's easy to coach like that, man. Yeah. When you got that upstairs power. <laughs> yeah. But you got to remember, Spoke came literally from the bottom. He was yeah. the video guy. Yeah. The guy that don't never come out the room. Right. You never see his face. And so that's why, and that's why, every, see, that's what people, people didn't realize when LeBron and them got there that first year, right, Spro was a coach. And they were talking about, well, is he good enough to coach his team? Like, people don't want to remember all that. Is he good? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not mm -hmm. like there was really any foundation mm -hmm. that, that helped LeBron. He was, that was his first year as that, a head coach. That was his first year as a head coach. So, so you them. get Bron, the big three, and you the first year head coach, that's a lot of And pressure. that's what I'm saying. That's so a lot. That's yeah. why when they're talking about the that's heat culture foundation, it wasn't what you got. This is not Popovich. This ain't like coming to Steve Kerr right now. This is a guy who's learning at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right? I, we played... Their winning streak, that rook, that first year, they were eight and eight. Yep. They were eight and eight. Start the season. The start of the season. We came over there, like, oh yeah, we're gonna get these motherfuckers out. Like, cause you know, everybody wanted them, mm -hmm. right? And somehow that game, they done switched their mode. Figured LeBron out. at the point, this person at the two. Now, boom, 23 games winning streak. Mm -hmm. Started because of our stupid answers. Right? <laughs> right, right. We won 27 one year. And I don't know how Spo managed that. He was like, but I give him credit though. Like I said, he hold himself accountable. He's fair. He's honest. You know, he don't look you in the eye and lie to you. Like, he, I remember he told me one time, he was like, listen, I don't want you to do that. I know at Cleveland State you could do that. I don't want you to do that. This is what I want you to do. If you do this, I can't guarantee you none, but you're going to probably play. If you do that, you for sure you're not going to play. Mm. And it was that easy. You know how some cats are a lot to you. Oh, keep working on your game. You got it, young <laughs> fella. You got it. And knowing that he ain't playing. Mm -hmm. He looked me in my eyes and said, if you do this, you, find, you keep finding Ray, you keep setting up those guys, you'll play long enough to where you can get a couple mid-range jumpers, a couple of jumpers. He said, but if you take that first jumper when they go under again and you don't make it, you won't be playing too long. So that's how I took that earlier when they be yeah. disrespecting going under. <laughs> I ain't even thinking about what he said. I'm thinking about what's supposed to say. If I shoot this shot and I don't make it, I'm for sure going to sit down. So I made me yeah. suppress the ego. Well, I actually played 25 a night. After the lockout, I mm -hmm. went down there to visit. I had, it was your, it was my rookie, rookie year. Yep, my rookie year. 
They was on the road. I went down there, bitch, sat down, and everything was great. They laid it out. And I, 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 what's, what's your expectations? No, like, much. I, in order for me to be effective, I feel like I just need like 25 a night. Like, I can't promise you that. <laughs> yeah. He kept it real, honey. Look you straight yeah. in your eye. Damn. Yeah. And you Kmart. Can't, can't promise you that. My yep. was winning championship. I'm like, it was only it was only three people that was guaranteed anything on that team. Yeah. Ah, Those damn. three. Well. It was only three people that was guaranteed thirty plus minutes, thirty five. Oh, you was coming in on the championship year, mm -hmm. so you was free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right after right the, the lockout. Right after the lockout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, let's go back right. to draft night for you. you. Get drafted by the Bulls, traded to the Timberwolves, and then you end up on the Heat. Mm -hmm. So how excited were you to be able to go from Cleveland State to join that big three squad? And to your point, how were you able to carve out a role? On that team. I think you had, what, 20 points? Your, your first game. Your, your first first game. game. Yeah. I mean, so going from Cleveland State to dropping 20 on the Heatles in your first game. When you get drafted, I ain't really care where I went, honestly. But then when, after draft night, you know it's a series of trades. You don't go to the other places. You just wait until at the end of draft night. Then you know the final place. Mm -hmm. So it was like I got drafted by Chicago Bulls. Cool. That's where Mike went. I'm like, okay, I get to go to the Bulls. <laughs> trade, Minnesota Timberwolves. Like, ah, oh, it's cold, but should we in the league anyway? First yeah, round. Yeah, we're in the league. The end of the night. The Miami Heat has moved up and took the rights, and then uh, my whole house went crazy. Because, you know, everybody was watching the Heat. Yeah. And then Brian from Ohio, so it was like, I went to Cleveland State, so it was like dope. But that switched off the day after, because I'm like, dang, I'm going to the Heat. I don't want to be on the bench. I want to show them that I can play. So I'm like, I got to earn their respect. These is like the creme de la. Mm -hmm. So when I got to the team, first place in all the sprints, they're early. You know, when they ask me to do something, you know, I don't got no ego, you know, I do it. And plus, I ain't no 19-year-old, you know, I did four years of college, so I was kind of like a little bit mature, so I wasn't a hee-hee-ha-ha -ha type of guy. So they kind of like, was like, Rook don't joke around like that. He's mm. serious. So I'm like, bro, I'm, trying to, I'm <laughs> yeah. trying to get it. I'm not 19. So I don't got years to play around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that first game, I played like I was at Cleveland State, honestly. I didn't change nothing. I went out there. Every shot I was open, I was going to shoot it. Mm -hmm. I ain't have no, I was green light all day long. Of course, they reeled that in, <laughs> but so, but Spo let me do it though. Yeah. Spo wanted to see naturally would I get out there and be afraid of the moment or play, and he realized like, oh nah, if I don't say nothing to him, that young fella is shoot, <laughs> yeah. he is shoot with all three of them on the court. I come off that mug and fire. So of course, <laughs> of course they reeled because at Cleveland State, that's I ain't had nobody yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I had all three, yeah, all three of them. I come and shoot that, and so they <laughs> flat, wait, flat, they, they wait. <laughs> Your ass on the Take this pick. Hey, hey, <laughs> Run. <laughs> bruh. D-Wade, nah. we're about to 77 you first. BJ, when we used to play, I wasn't scared to shoot, bruh. Uh, nah. It's just they waited till I had like an off game, which is smart. You wait till they have an off, till I have an off game, and then be like, okay. Once I had the off game, they was like, all right, okay, listen, young fella, listen, this is how we're going to need you to play. Mm -hmm. Like, we like your aggressiveness. We know that you're capable of that. It's going to be some nights mm -hmm. that you're going to do that, but... This is what we need every night. And I embraced it because I wanted to play. If yeah. I would have fought it like these young guys now, they can fight it, and I don't know, and still somehow play. Yeah. On that team yeah. full of those vets, they had no problem taking me out of the rotation and going with the big lineup. Yeah. When Mario goes to the bench, Brian at the one, d at the two, Mike Miller at the three, Chris Bosch at the four, UD at the five. If I wouldn't act right, mm. that's what it would have been. Yep. But I was able to kind of give d -Way and LeBron a blow off the ball Cause when one of them was sub out, that's when I can handle the ball. Mm -hmm. And I knew how to, when Bron cool being off the ball, if he know you're gonna outlay him the ball. Only time he don't like getting off the ball is if he out there standing around and you ain't passing the 20 more time on target. And I knew that. So I'm like, when I get it, two dribbles, I'm, I'm advancing the ball. And same thing with D-Wade. D-Wade, like he don't like to run. He like to catch the ball and run with it. So when I get it, he ain't even all the way down the court, though, but I'm giving it to him so he can feel the ball and rhythm. Mm -hmm. Brian, he'll run the whole court and then catch it. And so yeah. I figured that out. And so that's how I was able to play as a rookie. I was like, I know what they need. I know kind of where they like the ball. And if I, if I give them what they want, I play long enough, I can make some shots. Yep, yep. So yeah. Speaking about knowing where they like the ball, we got to talk about one of the most legendary plays from that era. Ooh. <laughs> you already know what we're doing. Talking about Jason T. Ooh. You already know what we're doing. An accident that turned so, into so a. <laughs> you, threw that, you threw that lob when Ron dunked on Jason Terry in TD Garden. Mm -mm. I got to know first and foremost why you do that to that man? Jason Terry's a good dude. Hey, listen here. Listen. First of all, do you know the backstory of how much trash was being talked in that series? Mm. It was a lot of trash being talked. 
and you know Jet talked trash yeah. a lot to Bron because he because he beat you know he JT beat them yeah. so he in his mind he feel like he owned them. he could say what he want to say I, I got one he got his championship uh -huh. tattoo so I turned the ball over so I'm trying to make up for the turnover mm -hmm. and so I pressured him D Wade did the back tip we got it back and so I had a chance to lay it up. But I, when, one thing when you hear Brian when he runs, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. He's like, huh, huh. And, and I and I heard it, so I got the ball and I was I, I was about to take a dribble and lay it up, but I heard, huh, huh. and I was like, oh, I don't even got a seam. <laughs> I just had to make sure JT couldn't tip it, so I had to throw it just high enough so JT couldn't tip it, and he was running full speed, so no matter who was standing there, it was gonna be a freight train. Yeah. And so I didn't think JT was gonna jump. I thought he was gonna get out the way, but he turned around and jumped and was like. Like a, like a so they should have arrested you for yeah. accessory to murder. Immersive. <laughs> like, he said, oh, yeah. like, they should have yeah. arrested you for accessory to murder. For sure. Like you said it, like you did a drive, did a drive by, and you set it up. That makes mm -hmm. sense. <gasps> Look, <gasps> we can hear it. Nah, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For real. What the hell was Jason Terry thinking? Did, did, uh, like after, like did y'all go stand by him and ask him? Then nobody said, well, we look. You saw what, what we did. We looked what, at him. But <laughs> after when he got up, y'all should have went on like, man, what the hell was you thinking? <laughs> Like, he had no chance of hell of getting that ball. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes a reaction, you it's run back, reaction. and then you, you turn into it. You, yeah, oh, you don't know. Yeah, your reaction be, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Get the hell out of there. They shoot. <laughs> now, I remember I tried to take a charge, and I took a charge on, I tried to, it was fast break, and I tried to take a charge on Carlos Boozer. <laughs> uh, Mistake. It sounded, it looked good. Like, oh, yeah, I'm about to, <laughs> ah, <laughs> that ain't no guard. <laughs> he just left it, just, boom, 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 and one, like, ah. Oh. I got Damon Jones on the break. <laughs> Stack set him up, my rookie here. Boom, boom, boom. He, you gonna take a charge, uh -huh. man? If you don't, <laughs> he used to be disrespectful too. Thank God. Raise your knees up on people and everything. Nah, we was, we we was so stupid, man. Like, like, yo, can I just get out the way? Like, just Better. got somebody like that running full speed at you. Six nine two sixty. Ain't yeah. nobody calling no charge, man. Just, you can't. Ain't it gonna hurt? Jump. <laughs> and, and the way, can we rewind the way he landed? Yeah. Please. Now, it's kind of, it's Please. good that he turned sideways, because if he would have got hit in oh, the sternum, was, he would have broke his sternum, though. No, look at his sock. <laughs> <laughs> when he first hit the ground, he on his side. Look, I mean, you ain't got no body control. Bro, you, bro, you don't see his, you don't even see him on the other. <laughs> <laughs> at this moment, just realized, he realized he fucked up. <laughs> He probably thought it was. He probably look at, look at, look, look at him, dog. Yo, he ain't got no control over none of his extremities at this point. That's a cold Yo, photo, right? That's a hey, I need now, that's underdog. The put that on a t-shirt. That's, that's, that's the photo. That's the photo you need right there. That's the photo. Just, uh. Hey, Gil. He looked like he in get the that. bed. Need a yeah, Gil, yeah, like let me get that for real. Wife. Oh no, serious. Get, hey, get, get that. Get that for a t-shirt for sure. Get that for the t-shirt. With the black T-shirt for show. We need, yeah, Rashad, go ahead, go ahead and make that one. Yo, <laughs> he not gonna make it. Oh, see, the thing that. is, you and real y'all, y'all didn't do it no justice. Listen, see, <laughs> just no. Listen, we both would have got texts. Yep. Had I been on the floor and somebody got dunked like that, oh yeah, back at I would have got a text Fantastic. for damn sure, because I would have stood over you. Yeah. <laughs> no question about. Even one, in a playoff game, one of my teammates would have dunked on something. That hard. That hard. That hard. In the playoff series, and it's so much trash being talked. And, and it's too easy. Man, I would have stood and over you. There? Yes, and they was up too. Man, I would have hit him when Michael Jordan got on these motherfuckers. Uh, Fuck I would have been. <laughs> listen, man, yo. Them old Scotty Pippen, yes, New York yes, dudes. Yes, <laughs> some of them, dog. Listen, I'm telling you, man. Where's that bear down for Jason Terry? It yeah. got, it got yeah. real quiet in here. Yeah, ain't no bear down yeah, for that, that dead that, body. That, <laughs> hey, JT, yeah, JT, JT I still love you, though. Y'all want to see a dead body? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. was. I, yeah. We didn't know that that was going to be Knight. that. I can't. I can't. Brandon though. Knight, there's a few dead bodies that, yeah. that's in the NBA arenas right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Corpse. That, that messed this court. That hey, messed this career up. Dog, outline. They need to put a yeah. permanent out, chalk outline. Huh? BK, that's my brother. Yeah, that was a rough He's a he good a dude, too. Stretch. Yeah. He was nice, too. He just had, he that, had, that, had knee, that knee yeah. injury. Yeah. He, got a, he got a max deal. Listen, man. In uh, Phoenix. He had the max. He was a max player. Yeah, he, was, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he averaged he 20 was. a game. Yeah, he was. I was, yeah. I was in the locker room the day he got traded. Yeah, he was. You yeah. was in Milwaukee. The day he got traded in Milwaukee. We had practice and everything. That was tough. That was crazy. Looking but, back now, though, he had to unleash the honest, though. He had to. But that shit was. That man he, was he just won MVP of the Puerto Rico League. Was that was a habit. That was B Knight won Puerto He won the. Yep. Yeah, but he, that's my training partner when I train in Miami. That's what we train together sometimes, yo. Okay. Is he, 
Is he there or is it a ghost? Because he's damn sure dead. <laughs> he a corpse right now. <laughs> it's yeah, but that don't right. count, man. Yeah, dude, he goes in the way. always the big man playing dunk yeah. on the little man trying to get Listen, credit. That's a fact. DJ yeah. could have dunked him and the ball. <laughs> Could have grabbed, dunked him, yeah, and yeah. the ball. Yeah, that, that, was that, that was tough. That was yeah, tough. I mean, that, was, that was tough. I mean, we, listen, listen, we try. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jump up there, you know, think you ain't going to just, like, yeah, I, saw I tried to block Shaq once. Hey, okay. I saw a couple <laughs> bits later. Yeah. yeah, what was you doing? I saw two <laughs> lately about Russ. Russ trying to take charges, and he getting that... Braun mm. coming down there, <laughs> just, bro, trying to take a charge. He hit him. I like, come yeah, on, man, move. This is y'all disrespectful when y'all looking on young people. With move little ones, your man. ass out of. Listen, I'm a shot blocker, and if I see him coming, mm -hmm. I'm moving the fuck out of the way. I'm telling you. Too much power coming. Hey, man, How do you know as a shot blocker when you're going to move out the way versus when you're going to jump? Like, what it do depends you on momentum. Yep. Like, yeah. if, I, if I got my step and I know I can, but if your momentum, certain guys coming a certain way, I'm not going to jump. Like, it's just what it is. I'm going to act, I'm act like I, I'm going to gather like I am, and you might change your mind. Uh -huh. I might <laughs> give you that because you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and if it's a short dude, he definitely going to change if you do that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, that, it's, it's how much power you come. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. just like anything. Hey, you got to, okay, he's swimming. Yeah, we both come in Simon. We both run at the same time. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, but yeah. If, if I'm standing in the station there and I see you running that, nah, I'm going to move. Like a cat like Ja, you going for it? Ja, Morant. Oh, he'll go for Ja. I'm going to go. Because my, my body. We have Westbrook is the harder one. Because I weigh more than him. Once I hit him, it's going. Because I'm going to jump out. Like, yeah. That's the thing about a lot of people. Yeah. They jumping straight up. Yeah. No. You're going to get your ass put in that basket. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump out into your body. That's a fact. So I'm going to hit him. He's going to hit the floor. Like Russell would be harder because he's he's he bullying. He's even and he's strong as shit. Yeah. And he's strong yeah, up he's, top. Did you, did you ever have to make a business decision? Over. Hmm? Russell's jumping. Right. Did you ever have to make a business decision in the league where you had to get up? Man, I think I was in the pitch when Kobe dunked on Ty McCullough. I was about to cut. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that motherfucker back here. I'm like, God. T Mac, Vent, like, yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. I don't know why nobody used to try to jump with Vince. Once he made a few examples, it should have went. It should have been well documented. The only person country. who kept trying and him. And Swift. The only person who kept trying him yes. and kept getting embarrassed was motherfucker Zo. 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 Uh, yeah. Next thing. The one on the back. The one. Uh, the one on the in the front of the Nets bench, the behind the back, and uh -huh. the one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he. Man, I was like, you better stop. <laughs> you better oh, he he jumped with everybody. He's gonna jump with everybody. Yeah. So they don't know better. Yeah. The one thing he was gonna try to block it no matter what. Showmile Swift though. Showmile was crazy. That too. one when he was, I think it was with New Jersey and he dunked on somebody from the Bulls. He, he dunked on Alex uh what was it Thomas Tyus or Thomas or something? Yeah, Ty Tyrus, yeah, Tom, Tyrus, Tyrus Thomas. Tyrus Thomas. Yeah. Yanked it back. Yo, that's one of the sick yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. See, but those type of dudes, it ain't about just jumping high. Because when Vince go, he if he if you up with him, he just gonna yeah he can move it change the angle a little bit. Most people if you up with him and it's a block yeah. or a body contact, but Vince if you up with him, he gonna contort yeah. and then <laughs> it might have been rookie year or second year Vince. They playing Atlanta, the Kimbe jumped and they looked like the Kimbe was gonna block it and it looked like Vince was like this motherfucker didn't jump with me. Motherfucker went by this boy I was Stretch. like yo. <laughs> Yeah, anybody got that lean, anybody that can do this, yeah. you're in trouble. You better look out. Yeah. If they can jump and they can put that bitch here, <laughs> so you better watch out. Cause hey, it's all that lean, that lean, that's lean cause they yeah. gonna hit you. Yeah. Boom. Boom, and that ball up here. Mm -hmm. Like Dean Francis. I used to ah, ah. Oh shit. Hey, wa watch out. Imagine <laughs> and he, and he, he couldn't even grip the ball. He couldn't palm the ball. Yeah, yeah, that's what he right. couldn't palm the ball. That's the thing. Vincent Mike above. and them cats yeah, too. Yeah, you got yeah. Enough, like Amari and them up big ass hand, like, yeah. Oh, another dead body. Mario. Tolliver kid. Yeah. Go him. Mm -hmm. Omari dunked on him. Dead body. Yeah. yeah. Norris got a few more for you. So uh, you played in France a couple mm -hmm. years ago. You got the chance to play against Wimby, yeah. much younger version of Wimby, obviously. So what did you see from him out there, and what impressed you the most about his game now? His coordination for a guy that tall was, you know, that's not normal. Like, he didn't run... You know, most tall people and young, like that tall I'm talking about, they run kind of funny, their foot placement is kind of weird, they balance is off. He was always coordinated. <clears throat> so that's, that was the first thing that impressed me. Now, I ain't going to lie, I thought he would be good. I didn't know he was going to look like this, though. You know, some people thought he was going to be all world right away. I was one of the ones that was like, well, let me see. He's showing me. Because I thought defensively he was going to be 
great. But offensively, I wasn't sure. Mm. But he's showing me that he's he's sharp offensively. Like his jab step, he hit a cat with a jab step and one dribble three against Phoenix. I was like, like, man. So was he that polished when he was over there when you seen him? No. So that's been you got, with you got to think. He made a smart decision that I, at first it was questionable. So he played on a team. It was it's two te three teams in Paris. He played for Paris Nanterre one year when I saw him. He was young. And then when I I left. And he played for Asvel, the team that I used to play for, the Tony Parker's team. He yeah. played for that team, but he didn't play that much in EuroLeague. Like, he barely could get in the game. So I'm like, wait, is he that good? Like, because Luka dominated EuroLeague, which is like the NBA of Europe, mm -hmm. and his local league, which is the Spanish league. So he didn't dominate EuroLeague. Victor didn't. So I'm like, dang, is he that good? So he left that EuroLeague team to go back to one of the Paris teams. And I'm like, why would he do that? But it was because... He already knew he was going to be number one. He wanted to work on his stuff. Mm. So that team wasn't EuroLeague, so they wasn't as good. But because of him, they beat Asville a couple times because he was able to work on his stuff to get ready for the league. Because he knew in the league, he was going to have to be able to perform. It's more of an open game than in Europe. Mm -hmm. So he left the better organization, Asville, to play for that Paris team to work on his shoot as many shots as he want. Because everybody, I was like, Yo, why are you leaving the EuroLeague team? Like, Luca dominated the EuroLeague. He was smart enough to know, like, I'm not playing for EuroLeague. Mm -hmm. I'm about to go to the NBA next year. I need to work on my stuff. And so, okay. yeah. And so when you miss, he can miss 10 in a row. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. He's getting a rep in game. In game. And so he's learning confidence. Because out there, he had games where he 30, 40. Like, he was killing. But he also had games where he had missed five or six in a row, but wasn't going to come out. So... He ain't going to be shook by nothing that happens in the mm -hmm. NBA. He had a game where he had five points. All right, cool. Next game, he got 30. Mm -hmm. like. So last question we got for you. I've seen Brandon came in around the same time. You know, you guys are fans of unique hairstyles. <laughs> so who had the better high top in the league? Norris Cole or Brandon Jennings? Let's see. Uh, me. His was different, though. The styles was different. Man, he looked like he got that shit cut in Milwaukee. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. That was no L.A. Barber, bro. Nah, but his, I mean, his class act. Yeah, I'm about to say his was I'm in the movie. His swag, act. his swag was different with his box. Like I always, my thing was, I wanted mine to always be sharp. I told my barbers, don't round it out. Like make sure my stuff is not. Listen, degree. I had it at the McDonald's game too, so you know, I, I, was, so I was already, so I was already used to, you know, I already had it early. You know, yeah. and, and I had that and I had the gummy. But that, but I'm saying that's a, that's a. And you can't see the part. I had the part in there too. That, that's a bucks. That's a bucks barber though, right? That ain't like the L.A. barber or the D.C. Barber. get barbers, get nah, hey. nah. nah, I was in New Jersey. I got that from New York. I got that haircut the night before in New York. I swear to God. Okay. You, you shitting mm -hmm. on Milwaukee barber? Dude? I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Milwaukee yeah, got a hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah but what you, yeah, Gil, relax. Milwaukee. Gil's side. There's been some times where you go to a barber and they push your shit back. You be like, yeah. oh, man, let me just uh, wear a little headband. <laughs> yeah. Shit, Milwaukee. It was me, you, and uh, Shump had one. Huh? Yeah. Walking next yeah. to the had... And it was all it was all different though. Yeah. Some style was totally different. Yeah, his, was... his was like, remember Luke Skywalker from the uh, Knicks, the the dunk champ? Yeah. Yeah. Skywalker. Kenny, Kenny Skywalker, I mean. Yeah, his was more like that. I, yeah, everybody had it, but I, I had it first at the McDonald's. Hold on, like, no, you, know, you ain't have I get y'all to McDonald's and then I hit his job with the Bobby Brown at the oh, Jordan. Bobby. <laughs> I had, so, you that, know. that was elite. Phenomenal. My dad had it, that's why I got it. Oh. I got it in college, my senior year. Yeah, these Skywalker had, I had it. I, I had braids. I, I remember had braids had one game, and then I didn't have them the next game. <laughs> Why? Huh? You had braids for real, Gil? Yeah, I had. I had. Uh, yeah, I had braids. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You I did. Had you did. And, and then, no, no you know, hang to, time. Cause I, no, because Hell I was trying no. to do the Kobe all the time. I was trying to do the Kobe. You know what I mean? Like get it, and then it's, it's like crinkly, right? And so I just get it braided, and then have it like exactly. crinkly, and do all that. And then the lineup was so bad, I just had to cut the whole. Just so I had crinkly one day, and then. Ball head next game. Oh. They're like, what happened? Shut up. <laughs> oh, Nothing like a bad hairline, boy. I used to That's get my, get a, I used to fly my barber in from Dallas to Denver, but when I couldn't, a couple of dudes pushed me back in Denver. I would go to the barbershop after shoot around, let me cut my hair, right? They'll watch the game, and I didn't, I'm come out there, I'm bald. <laughs> Like, damn, what man, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing no, that. We're not doing that. We're not, not doing this that. skin, this guy. Cause this, yeah. that shit grow. There's one thing you can see on us that new growth. Yeah, that new growth. <laughs> <laughs> well, your hair still. Can you still, can you grow the flat top? Yeah, I still can. Yeah. I actually had it in the G League for a little bit. Oh, you did? 
just to see if I could do it. I wasn't sure if my hair would go like <laughs> that again. Yeah, yeah. It'd take about four, yeah, 30. four five yeah, yeah, months. Yeah, you, yeah, you I, you Still in your thirties, yeah. early. Yeah, I, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, Norris, we appreciate you putting up. We do one last segment, if you don't mind hanging out with us. It's called Mostly Fans. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hey. 94.7 Ways. 94.7. Smooth jam. Remember when you found out Theo wasn't black? Yeah, yeah. What? what? Every Sunday, yep. We thought Theo was black. Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> uh, first question comes from underdog user BMAC32. He getting big bags off of us. Is it a video question or is it yeah, a video? It is a video question. Oh, okay. Going to hit the, somebody what up, Gil? up in the back. What up, everybody? Question. What was it like for y'all to transition from once you retire? What was that process like? Like, how hard was it? I've seen a lot of former players talk about, you know, it's a little, it's a big adjustment to make from when you retire from the league. So what was y'all biggest adjustment in retiring? And what was that process like for y'all? So that's for y'all three, Norris. I know you still, you still in the game, so. Uh, it was uh, depressing because it's the first time that um, I remember, you know, November, I mean, when uh, October came and you can smell the season change and you, your body getting ready for training camp. There ain't no training camp for you, right? <laughs> um, trying to figure out how to, who you are. Right, you're not a basketball player anymore. Your bank account is meaningless. Yeah, you go to the mall and do this, but when it comes down to you watching basketball games and you're not a part of it anymore, and it's like, what do you like to do now? Who are you now? And since 10 years old, you're finding out for the first time, <laughs> everything you done learned for the last 20 some years is gone. And now do something. And it's like, shit. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. people don't realize when NBA players, just for NBA, I don't know other, other sports, that's when motherfuckers really pick up real bad habits. Gambling habits, drug habits, all that, because they're trying to fill this day up. Eating. Eating. <laughs> Eating. Nah, it is crazy. When you see a cat that used to be fit, athletic, then you see him now, you be like, you played in the NBA? That's tough to see. Point exactly. That's tough to see that. Go ahead, B. Uh, I think patience. Patience is a big thing. Um, understanding of who you're becoming knowing that the, uh, the game of basketball is done. Um, you know, unfortunately for me, I was able to find something right after I was uh, decided to be done. So I was able to keep working. Um, but I just feel like what the, you know, the biggest thing is what you see in basketball, what, what basketball has shown me. Um, traveling around the world, you know, playing in Russia, playing in China, playing in Italy, um, you know, with these eyes see is, what these eyes see are very powerful. So I, I think, um, you know, you just got to have a big, better mindset. No matter how your career ended or where you're at, remember, there's always uh, another opportunity in life. So I think you just got to remember that. Like, just keep going. You got to, like, don't stop. Just keep going. A lot of us don't get to play in our last year. Mm. Like, we don't, nobody's, that, that, that farewell tour. Guys don't get that. And select few guys have known it's gonna be my last year, and they get that love. And but for the most part, for damn near every athlete, mm -hmm. it's it's abrupt. It's like we think it's gonna happen next year, and it don't. So how do you deal with that? And to Gil's point, like when I got done, like I I didn't want to watch basketball. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to see it, be around it, you say basketball, I might cuss you out, you ask me <laughs> if I play now. Attitude was fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Just on edge. Like, wanna go, wanna go hoop, nobody calling. It's, it's a lot. And now what do you do? And bad habits. Mm -hmm. People get divorced, people start doing certain things that probably wasn't doing while they were playing because you didn't have the time to. Or, or, or the mental capacity to, to do all those things. But yeah, no, nah, for a lot of us, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's very depressing because in, in a way it's like a death. Yeah, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. like death, it is a death. Yeah, the death. It's a death. So, not in life, but in... To that character. To that character, it's, it's, it's a death. And you have to learn how to deal with the other side, the real, that real person mm -hmm. that you see in the mirror every day. Not this, this quote-unquote superhero that you didn't made yourself up to be. Like you gotta look at the real person, and how do you deal with wife, kids, situation, people, 
that you didn't have to deal with before. Yep. And because <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Like, I didn't have to deal with people for 15 years. Yep. I had people, I did, like regular, I didn't have to deal with people. I had people that worked for me, that did stuff for me. I didn't have to deal with people. So now you 15 years in, now I really gotta, now you, I'm, oh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, who the fuck is you? Yeah, <laughs> people scared to come up and say, no, you look unapproachable. Like, yeah, because I ain't dealt with people for 15 years. Yeah. Like, I've been sheltered and I've been here and I've been all these things for all this time. So now it's, but then you need to, to Brandon's point, if you don't have anything else going on, it's tough. But for me, I had my kids and my family to pour into, me to do the things that I didn't get to do while I was playing, take my kids to school, pick them up from school daily, go to plays, go to this, go to, so I poured my free time that I was, that I didn't have before. To the family. I poured into my family. That's dope, that's dope. Yep. So and sometimes still trying to figure it out. And some people don't even know that too, because you know, for the most part during the seasons, we're not family men like that. Yeah. You know, we family here. You know, you know, hey, ooh, gotta go. Then you're gone and come back. You got hey, nannies and right? you got everything got in place. Stuff. Like I, I remember, I went to the 24 hour fitness for the first time and got irritated that other people was in that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Like now, how, I, to how, how I worked out and went to the jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. I went to the jacuzzi. True. Think yeah. about it. You that's, go to the jacuzzi, crazy, you crazy. just, you by there. <laughs> the steam room is you. The, I go there at midnight and stuff like this, and I'm sitting in the jacuzzi, right? And somebody walk in, and I, and I, what the fuck are you? Uh, <laughs> who, who the fuck are you? Like then I had to scoot over. This nigga spraying shit. Wait a minute, goddamn! And, and I left, bro. <laughs> like, hey, I left. The spray, hey, the spray. The is spray. Fun. Who the fuck? Like what you doing? Are you trying to kill me? Like it. It took me so long to understand. That's culture like, shock. Like go, and people. I have a gym. I have a gym, but I I train myself to be around other people because you're not. You're you're not like you know. Morton's is closed. I ain't got to eat with the regular folks. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm giving you uh, tickets to the game. You're going to, when this shit closed, you're going to open back up for me and the team. People don't know that's the, that's the luxury a yeah. player has. That's real life. Restaurant that ain't closed. Real, that, that, that ain't that's that's y'all real 10, life. That, that ain't everybody's real life. Yeah, the restaurant is closed at 10 and it's 2 o'clock and they still in there fucking making steaks. Hey, yeah, like, hey. Come on, <laughs> go, go try that shit when you get done playing. Hey. Uh, excuse me, sir. Um, our staff is trying to leave. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to ask you to pay your bill now. Yeah, yeah. get on the plane. <laughs> we seen that. Yeah, we taking off right now. They be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other, I, God damn it. Now they're like, hey, put your phones away for... Let you see that. It don't work like that. Yeah. We know this. Like, we know All this ain't that. real. We sitting there take, can you get off your sofa? Like, can no, you, can you lift your seat up? Can you move your bag? Can Man. you do this? Put can your you seatbelt on. Like, for what? For what? <laughs> for I've what? been flying for 30 years. I ain't wore a seatbelt once. <laughs> and I'm hey, still no, here. Like, I be having problems. <laughs> like, yeah, it was the problem. Real. Like, it was the little, it's the little things that people think is normal, but it's not normal to us. That's a fact. My wife be telling me, she was a fire attendant today, like, baby, you can't get mad at her for her trying to do her job. Yeah. Like, she's asking you to do the stuff that normal people do. I had to do. check myself. Like, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. when they be saying, put your phone away, and we, we be texting all in the air. Yeah, on, on, on the, the air, private yeah. jet. Yeah, we bro, we be. taking off that bitch at 10,000 feet. We still trying. Hey, hell, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hold, hold. Speak with me. Ain't no turbulence. Yeah, come on. Come on, man. <laughs> ain't no turbulence. Man, you got to walk the plane, taking off. This coming from the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> trying not to fall and shit. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Hold your shit. Hold your shit. It's like, you got drinks and shit on the table. Like, <laughs> there, was like, there was some one year where I was trying to see if I can slide down man, all I, the way to the end. I bet, you know, I bet, I'm sit, sure. Sit in the Yo, is crazy. Let me get a blink. Let me get a blink. See if I can sit there. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> man, we got speakers playing. This, 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 all kind of crazy. Hey, listen, Gil, you, but, but, but no, you're was, a movie, bro. I have to adjust to that. Hate to be his rookie. No, no, what? what? I would have hated it, too. Like, I had, like, that's what I'm saying. It was so much fun, but... Now you're a normal person. I think I'm a normal person yeah. now, like... Yeah. yeah, even cops. You never worry anybody, about them. Anybody? Like people are like, yeah. How would you deal with the cops? What? Hey, Miss Arenas. Hey, hey, Earl. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right. I think it. I remember I got pulled over once. I didn't. I'm going home. <laughs> Come to the house. Yeah. I don't know about you. Uh, go to the house. Oh, I didn't even know you was following me. <laughs> All right, Gil. Okay, yeah. I, I get it. I just wanted to tell you, good game last night. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with my, I okay. get a ticket. <laughs> okay. You I get a stuff. ticket. The dude didn't know it was my, he pulled me over to take the ticket back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, that happens. Took the ticket. My homeboy, I'm in the car like, who the fuck does that? Like, how does that work? 
That's like real they gonna pull me out the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, I'm saying people really hurt. <laughs> now I'm, let my ass get pulled over as a civilian. Different story. <laughs> Nice. Let's move to uh, question number two. Pull me over now. You don't get the same treatment. <laughs> question number two for <laughs> underdog. <laughs> you better get into this game. Hey, hey, cops coming. Don't let him in. <laughs> Do everybody know it's you when you're driving the whip around. What's your name on the back? Name on it. name on the license For a reason. Put my name on it. Here's our question from NFL Lou. Yo, when you're trying to teach your son or watch a film with your son, like, what are you trying to teach him? Like, what are you trying to get him to understand and look like Kenyon? You as well, like... When you're watching a film with KJ, what are you trying to show him and understand? And the second question is, is how would a player view the game versus a coach? NFL Lou with the Yankee hat on. And the Dominican flag. Shout out to the DR. I well, just, I mean, you know, you, you, can, you can give, you know, kids all the tools, but they play the game how they see it. Right, so um, you know, no matter what tool I give him, he's gonna play it how he sees it, and how he sees it, all I can do is just you know ask him the questions. So, okay, what did you see here? What were you doing here? Right, um, I'm not one of those that's trying to tell him how to play the game because you know you don't have the same skills I had, I don't have the skills you had, right? You know, like the luxury he has is you know I can adapt faster. Right, I can see a move and say, "All right, this move would be good for you. Let me add this to your workout." Okay, I, you don't like that one. You know, I, I can I get to do that for him, and then from there, it's watching him play, and then say, "All right, look, when you're playing against this guard, stop doing all this. He's gonna get under you. He's gonna let you go long arm, and then he's gonna stop you and mm -hmm. steal that." Right? Against you, he has to do this. Against you, he gonna play this way. So I, all I do is just, you know, just correct, and then from there, just him going over it and over and over, playing against these different types. He just adjusts anyway. Yeah, it was the same thing. Like when KJ was in high school, and with Cameron now, been in high school uh, playing. Yeah, no, it's just yeah, the things that you see because you want them. Yeah, you try to their game mm -hmm. is tell them how to be effective in their approach and how they play in the game and. Yeah, just telling. Yeah, just, so it's it's simple, not hard to do. But yeah, it's, to Gil's point, man, is you are their eyes mm -hmm. and letting them figure it out. So yeah, I'm I'm with it. And we don't even know what that second one was. Yeah, yeah, I, I, had, I was yeah. trying to. Yeah, I was. Hey, what was the second one? Something about a coach and yeah, yo, what about coaches? Bro, and you players. get hundred fifty <laughs> players and coaches, coaches and players. <laughs> No, that was the first part. That was the first part. All right, what's the, the next part? Second part yeah, was last why one? does it take? We, we do not have a last coach? one. Right. Budget and, cuts. Oh, yeah. here I got a question. And then what does a player see versus a coach? Yeah, everything. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one. It was one of those things where a, a, a player asked me, and he said, "Yo, remember your? Do you guys remember your last NBA bucket?" I don't remember mine. I don't even remember the last NBA game. See? I, I think I do remember mine. Now that you last asked NBA bucket, last man, that's one. a good one. They said that's a, he said that's one question you ask an NBA player because for the most part what you're saying, no NBA player knows his last bucket to even put it in this process. Oh, that's yeah, I know my He said, my he said you remember always remember your, you remember your first bucket. For sure. He said when you ask him, do you remember your last? It's going to take them a while because now they got to try to figure out when was their last game, where was it at, what was the shot. Because it wasn't like, So that was the thing that every, like, my, my, my year in Memphis, at, after every game, I'm sitting there like, oh, my last, was this my last bucket? This is my last bucket. Let me write this down, my last bucket. All right, nope, nope, this is not my last bucket. This is going to be my last bucket. And that was the thing that I was trying to always hold on to, remembering my last bucket. That's, mm. a, that's a good question. Good question. Yeah. I have no I idea. <laughs> I know where it was. <laughs> See, yeah, I was in Houston. My last bucket was with Milwaukee, so I don't know where <laughs> you don't it was. Know it was, it is. Yeah. was with Milwaukee. Now I you get in, to go try I to was figure in Houston it out. When I played in OKC. We share that in common. Yep. Milwaukee. My own Milwaukee. That was the year uh, Russ averaged the triple double. Oh, with the Thunder. The, yeah. Yep. That playoff year against the Rockets. James Harden and them. Man, I didn't have, but now you got to go back and Look at figure it. out what it was. Yeah. yeah. Might have been a three. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, like, it wasn't that many buckets yeah. in that game. I ain't scored that much. <laughs> so before we go, we got the uh, chat poll results for the better high top. 60%. Norris Cole, you got it. 
Yeah. BJ, you got, but BJ, you know, Chaz <laughs> Hayden, see you do good in the community, yeah, inspiring yeah. the youth. They're, so they had to do something to bring balance to the force with the head. So keep doing what you do, spread the positive. <laughs> you know how the chat moves. They don't want appreciate to see you. Appreciate y'all. BJ's but, was fly, though. Was, but North, we appreciate different. you pulling up, man. You're in the area, so you got to come, come to the arena more often. So. It's been another episode of Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. whoop, whoop we will whoop, see y'all next